<laughs> yeah, how to do the quiet on set. What's up, Stan? Hello, Dennis. Stan, Thomas. I'm not going to look you in the face this whole episode. I'm going to look at you through the computer screen. Oh, you like that now? Yeah. You have a monitor to fuck with. Yeah, I'm the fucking look at your fucking ugly mug. You know you like it. Well, it is humongous. What, my head? Yep. That it is. I have a pretty big head, too. No. Yes, I For do. For your little body, maybe. Um, what the hell are you freaking calling little, dude? <laughs> are you kidding me? Little body. You know what we're going to do today? Bro. We're going to talk to Jessica Penny about that time you almost got beat up by... Or you almost... I'll give it to you. You almost beat up Travis Brown. No, I didn't. You did. I have I have a lot of belief in you. It was going to go down, Chinatown. Oh, huh. my God, go. When, uh... I really believe in you. You know how it is. When are we getting her on? She's game for 7 o'clock her time, so... Or no, 7 o'clock our time, 4 o'clock her time. So, that's in an hour. Yep. What, do you want to jump right into somebody? Um, isn't that why we do the show? Uh, something like that. Sometimes we like to talk to each other, I thought. Oh, you just looked at me, too. Well... You broke already. No. How do my, uh, levels sound? I don't know. Like shit. Because you sound like shit. Bro, I got the voice of Mariah Carey. No, you don't. The, you have the, Mariah Carey has the voice of Mariah Carey. I got the male version going on. So kick me a fucking rhyme, dude. No, I'm not a... Do you want to put on a little Mariah Carey for you? No. Maybe you could sing? No. Come on, Stan. We'll leave the singing to you. Stan. We're, uh... <coughs> we, I was also talking to Ali today, trying to get over that brick wall that we've been dealing with lately. Okay. So he's going to come on the show... Not tonight, because he said he's a little under the weather and he's traveling, but he's going to come on the show probably next week and give us, like, an update on his roster. All right. So, you know, we don't have to get one guy on. We can get Ali on. Ali will tell us everything we need to know. Type of deal. What are you drinking there? G Fuel. What flavor? This is Bahama Mama. Okay. Is that your favorite one? So how do you feel in this setup? It's a little uh, warm down here. You got your air on? It can be put lower. It's, uh, I think it's at like 73. Your boy Kusumano hooking it up. Yeah. Uh, have you hung out with Kusumano since that boating day? Negative. You guys haven't gone riding together? No. We went riding together and I hit you up when we were on the boat. And that was it. Oh, that was the extent of your guys' friendship? Yep. All right. So how was your uh, Tuesday? Tuesday, I um, today, yeah, two days it was today. I so as an apprentice, I can't really do too much uh, stuff because um, I haven't been like uh, taught in it, I guess you know, or I don't have, like certifications in certain things. So I can pretty much, uh, I can only climb poles that are dead and what that means is that it's de-energized and grounded so there's no electricity on the pole and so today i got to do that for the first time in three weeks and this pole was down by uh the ocean and it pulls by the ocean get like fucking really dried out so the pole was really dry, all right? It had tail steps, which are those like, little like hooks that come out of it that people climb. And your boy cut out a couple times. What do you mean <laughs> cut out? Fell? So when your, 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 uh, your gaffs or the little spikes on the side of your shoes that you use to go in, fucking your boy went down. I mean, I didn't fall off the pole. I'm a goddamn athlete. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the weight I was trying to put in the pole came out like whoa were other people going down no so now everybody else had like the other two apprentices had easier pulls so now you're past like that school training style you're now kind of out on the job yes yeah we're out in the field yeah so this was like live okay if you will like we were actually doing they it wasn't like i was just doing stuff just to do stuff i was doing something that had a purpose to do a job yeah and i cut out and i was cool as a cucumber but like the guys, I could I could tell they were like kind of sweating a little bit. <laughs> like, whoa, Dennis, like take it easy, nice and. And I'm like, Psh, I got this. You were going professional athlete speed. Yeah, no, I wasn't trying to go fast. It was just. It's just in your nature. Again, I hadn't, uh, I hadn't climbed in three weeks, 
And like on our very last day of climbing school, they showed us how to how to use our like secondary belt. So I had I only had one day of using my secondary belt. I had to use it today. And I had to go over some it's called tell. That's what like your cable and all that stuff's on. And uh yeah, by freaking and when I got down they're like, Yeah, you probably had the toughest pull, like, but you like handled it well. Handled like a champion that yeah, you are. Yeah. So that's uh, that was the extent of today. Devin Clark, our guest from yesterday, mm-hmm. our, our new homie, he just wrote something pretty nice about us on Instagram. Oh, is that right? Yeah. As you were talking. He shared our episode and he said that it's great fun and that we crack him up. Did we crack him up yesterday? Uh, day. <laughs> One of the funniest things was uh, when I re-listened to the episode, was like later in the episode, you were like, I forget what you said, but then you were like, you know what? And I would fuck you up for him for calling him Derek fucking 30 minutes ago. And I was like, dude, what yeah. the fuck? And then someone said, I think you were like, you crack me up. I'm like, no, nah, crack your damn teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was really good. That was a good one. Yeah, thank you. Menace and his funny jokes. Yep. I only, get, I only have like one per episode, but... One funny one? No. Like a real a real one that I think about later. A real knee slapper. Yeah, like I'll think about the next day. Like, that was a good one. You're funny. But why? Now, we were talking about Felicia Spencer before. You watched that Cyborg fight, right? Yes. You saw that they released Cyborg. Yes. Crazy. Because she posted, I guess, like a thing with, um, I mean, they were maybe looking for a reason, but she posted like a thing talking about or wording what her and Dana White were saying when they were having a conversation backstage. And apparently Dana White was like, no, that's not really what I was saying. And then she re-released the video or UFC re-released the video with what was actually said. And it was actually like a respectful conversation. It wasn't like, you know making it like he was shit talking or he was actually saying, no, I don't talk shit about you. I only say nice things about you. Right. But she tried to release it kind of mm, scandalously, I guess, whatever, get people on her side or something where she said her people did it like that. And then Dana, I guess, or whoever got pissed and they were like, you know what? We're not even negotiating with you. Dana was like, we'll give you release, early release. You can go talk to Bellator. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Uh, yeah. So that, I guess. Well, the thing is, man, they brought like they brought her over. She fucking pops hot, right? Yeah. They essentially make a weight class for her because she cannot make the weight class that, uh, you know, is already in the UFC. So they make a weight class for her. She has trouble making that weight class. It was fun. I'll be honest for, with you. It was fun watching her trash two, two, like two girls where, she, you know, they didn't stand a chance. But then I was like, ah, this is old. Yeah. And then my girl Amanda Nunez came in and fucking molly whopped her. Oh, Amanda Nunez fucking put the beats on her. And then, uh, yeah. Yeah. And now she's upset. But we're going to get Felicia Spence on in a little while. Okay. And we'll see what her thoughts are. I feel like now she's the woman at 145, you know, to possibly fight Amanda Nunez. Even off a loss. You know, you lost the Cyborg, but now she's gone. Felicia Spencer beat that girl, Megan Anderson. So she um, right. has to be up there. Has to be up yeah. there. Yeah. All right. We'll talk to her in a few. I'm waiting for Joey Beltran or Jocko to get back to me. We'll talk to them a little bit about what's going on with their shit. Okay. Get into some Caleb Rogers. Who dropped? She's a big fan of your... Uh, Stan Cam? You know, you just getting in there and really just... Doing your stick negatography. I don't even there? remember how um, cinematography, Dennis. S- fuck you. Remember how we were talking, I believe yesterday on the show, about um, how Colby Covington made that remark about Matt Hughes? Yes. Matt Hughes was actually a good sport about it. He like laughed it off and said it was, uh, you know, he got what Colby was doing with it, but he was <laughs> like, it was, it was a little off-putting, but I'm cool. He's like, you know, you got to have thick skin if you're going to be in this game and get anywhere. Right. I mean, so it, it, at the new job I'm at, they're always talking about like, whoa, like watch what you say and, you know, keep it PC. I'm over here like, dude, I don't like, if I don't make fun of you, I don't even like you. <laughs> <laughs> like, if I don't make fun of you, that means I don't like you. And that's the problem. Yeah. You know, and you if co- you don't make fun of me, I'm like, eh. A lot of the time I find like when you don't like someone, you come off like standoffish. You. Me, yeah, because yeah. you're almost like, well, I can't, I can't make fun of you, so I can't really talk to you. Yeah, we don't got much else to really say here. Yeah, 
At least that's the vibe I get from the And outside. also, if I make fun of you, you get offended by it. Like, fucking yeah. fuck off, yeah. loser. Do you see also they booked uh, Corey Anderson versus Johnny Walker? Yeah. That's, do, you, uh, do, you, do you follow the guy, Johnny Walker? Johnny Walker, I lost some money. I think I did a parlay maybe against him. Hmm. And he came out with some of that fucking craziness that he comes out with. Who did he, who did he fight last that I was like, ah? Oh. Ooh, let's try it. Let's go for it, man. Why don't you? Uh, Fuck you. <laughs> give it a uh, a go. You got to get. Yeah, there you Fuck go. Off. He actually got me fucking doing. I'm the goddamn talent here. All right, Stan. I shouldn't be doing. Well, look at you. We're we're making uh new moves here at Menace and the Man. No, I can't even see shit. Later. Bye, buddy. You got to center it. There you go. Shut up. What were you even Googling now? I forgot. Johnny Walker. Oh, Johnny Walker. MMA. And all that came up was actual Johnny Walker. Yeah. Johnny Walker MMA. Well, let's go right in here. Get all up in it. And, uh, you know, he threw it down. Let's I don't know if he beat anyone too impressive. Like no, a, a huge, I what think do you mean? He... Oh, the the uh, that Russian dude. Which Russian dude? Misha Serkinov. Sir yeah, like he he didn't beat like a top five guy. He beat yeah, him. but my that Misha Serkinov did my boy, uh, Pat Cummins like real dirty. So I'm like, this guy is an animal. And then Serkinov fucking yeah, you, he only has three losses. You thought for sure that that one was gonna be yeah, Serkinov. Oh damn. He was on a losing streak, huh? Yeah. Damn. Now you're actually looking at it. You're like, what an idiot I was for betting that one. No. Nah, I think because I, I think Glover Textera would be Johnny Walker, and I think Vulcan would too. I mean, people are talking like... I mean... People are talking like Johnny Walker's in the mix of like a title contender right now. Hang up. I was... I was... I would... I thought Johnny these those two would beat Johnny Walker prior to Johnny Walker uh crushing And that's what it is. Three first you know how the Misha. UFC likes that. Three first round knockouts in a row. Yeah. That's why but, he might be a fight or two away from a title shot. I don't think Johnny Walker beats Vulcan. How old's Glover now? Glover's up there. Glover's getting up there now. What do you see? I see that he was born in 79. So he's an OG. Which makes him 39. Who dropped or said he was offended when... Uh, oh, gosh. You called him a Fortnite nerd. <laughs> when did he call you a Fortnite nerd? I don't know. Probably last episode. Yeah, and if you're... What are you? Come on, who that dropped means, you? Toughen on. up, who dropped you? If you're a nerd at a game to me, that means you're good at it. Yeah. Why? Who dropped is good, right? Mm-hmm. Otherwise, he wouldn't even be in this stream? Nope. I would have freaking banned him, dude. Menace only hangs out with winners. Yep. And and me. And I only hang out with people that want to hang out with me, so. <laughs> <laughs> so who dropped is in there like swimwear. Yeah. Smart man. All right, let's try Joey Beltran. So, who dropped you? Mark my nerd words. If Walker KOs Corey, Walker gets a title shot. Over, but that's what I'm, I was going to say. It's like a four-man race right now between and Weidman jumped in there. It's between Weidman, Dominic Reyes. Lahovich, I think, falls out now because he turned down a fight. Like they, uh, Corey Anderson went to an event that John Jones was out, picked a fight with him, like got all types of social media shit. They asked Dana White, is he going to fight next? And he was like, Corey, Walker, Corey Anderson's turned down like 12 fights. No chance. Uh, you know how that is. Like, they don't want you to turn down fights. Once you turn down a fight, you're fucked. You're getting Johnny Walker, you know? <laughs> Corey Anderson wanted someone ahead of him. He's number eight, and he gets Johnny Walker. So now Johnny Walker is going to try to make his name and get his title shot off Corey Anderson. Which Johnny Walker uh, ranked right now? I believe 12. Got me fucking going all over the goddamn place here. I mean, you don't have to. It's only for your own. That's your brain. Well... I can get it for you. It's for the people. Oh, you want to give it to the people? It's for the people. It's for the people? We'll, we'll say his ranking on... on uh... I'll get the rankings up. Let's type in UFC rankings. I don't feel like it. 
It might say it on there. He's right. 27. Yeah, he's still young. That's why even his couple losses, they were early in his career. You don't even know he's who that guy was. 20 years younger than... He's 12 right now. Sorry, not 12. Sorry. He's number 12. Oh. So. My math was way off right there. Did you see that? What'd you do? I was like, Johnny Walker's <laughs> 20 years younger than Glover. <laughs> but in reality, I don't know. What's it, 12? 12 years? Why? What is Glover? 39? 39. Walker's 27. Man, he's an OG in the game, Glover. Yeah, he is. One day you're going to be one of those. Um, An OG. And people are like, right, right now, people are like, you know what we need to do too? I want my, One thing I want to revisit, I want to get Dana White back on and I want to ask him. We've never or, had Dana him White on. on. We tried to get him on. Yeah. We almost had him on that one time, but TJ Dillashaw popped is what oh, ruined it for us. Right. And then um, I want to get him on and I want to ask him what's the criteria, who makes the decision to get Menace and Mac Rice in the Hall of Fame. I rewatched. Um, Diego versus Clay Guida. They were right. on the fucking ground for like eight minutes. You and Mac Rice hit the ground for like thirty seconds in the beginning of the fight, and it was when you mounted him off of a take a uh, failed takedown attempt and started punching him in the head. You landed like yeah. forty eight strikes. Yeah, took a few thousand brain cells probably. Well, yeah, but I feel like that fight could make it. We just got to find out what the criteria is. Get a little buzz going on behind it. Okay. And I think Menace Bermudez versus Mac Rice is a Hall of Fame caliber fight. Who do we have up next? Joey Beltran. We'll try him. Because I'm fucking sick and tired of talking to you. Are you? No. Yeah, that was a nice little riff. We, you know what we do? We don't do enough like MMA news and like current events and shit. Oh, we don't? We don't. We do? No. Yeah. So what are you talking about? I don't know. Stan? All right, let's try Joey Beltran, see if he's ready for us. I'm, if he doesn't I'm, answer, I'm done talking to you. If he doesn't answer, let's call your mom. My mom's at work right now. Yeah? She don't want to talk to you. Yeah, right. She, she thinks you're a nerd. She's, she's probably me. thinking about me right now. Hello? Ho. Oh. Joey Beltran. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm doing well. The Mexicutioner. That's me. Stan the man here, Dennis the Menace Bermudez, and now we're joined by the Mexicutioner, Joey Beltran. Thank you for having me, fellas. Thank yeah, you for dude. having me. Welcome to Menace and the Man. Oh, yeah. We're excited. You're, we, we mentioned who we were having on, and we were like, Joey Beltran, people were like, oh, my God, he's a legend. Uh, that's, that's kind of funny when I hear that, but, you know, it's nice for sure. Well, you know what it is. You're one of those guys that throws down every time you fight. Like, you're not expected to be like a lay and pray or a boring fight. Yeah, like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you know. I, I, I swear I know how to do jujitsu. I swear I'm a brown belt, you know. I know how to do all that other shit. But it's just like when she hits the fan, I just start revert to my old ways. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a white belt one stripe. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I miss you, dude. How you been? I'm doing well, man. Doing well. Are do you still have that like sponsored car? That what? That was it. You that had that car that's like uh, you. It's all hooked up. The Camaro. No. Who no. was that? I don't know. I wish. No. Fuck. At Rain. Right. You used to train over at Rain, right? I've been to Rain. I used to go to Rain. Yeah. Way back, back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I was like, I went when uh, Jesus. I was usually when Dominic, when Dominic and and Uriah did did the did the Ultimate Fighter. Mm-hmm. Like all everybody, cause my team was was at Alliance, right, in, in down Chula Vista. But everybody went out to Vegas with Dominic, and I couldn't do that because I had an Ultimate Fan. So I started commuting to to Rain. So that was I don't know what year that was, but that's when I was there. Oh, so you're from Alliance originally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, have you always been out there? Yeah, since the beginning. Oh, so you know our, <laughs> you know our boy days. Eric Uresk? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Eric, yeah, me and Eric, yeah, that's my homie. He recorded me out in Brazil one time, too. He has some good times. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's another one of those OGs, legends of the MMA game, especially on the East Coast. Oh, yeah, yeah, Eric's an animal. Yeah, he was out with you guys for years. For sure. Yes, yeah, he, he, would, he would come and go a little bit, right? Yeah, but he was a teacher at Alliance and like yeah. a main training partner for I know a lot of the little guys for a minute. 
Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. He would run like the, some of the grappling practices for the pro team, and then yeah, he always had his hand in in, in the mix for sure. Yeah, he comes every time he comes back to New York. He'll like stop into where we're from, Long Island MMA, and he'll you know run a couple of pro practices, attend some like he's supportive too. He'll attend other people's seminars and shit like that. Do his own seminars. Yeah, he's a good dude, Eric. Yeah, for sure. And well, so, training that alliance was were you were always working with uh, Eric Del Fierro? Yeah. Him too, yeah, another guy. Yeah, Eric and uh, was it? Oh yeah, he's <clears throat> yeah. Originally, I was uh, originally originally on on a team called North County Fight Club, and we were in North County, San Diego, and I was like, like the main guys that were on the team when I joined was like Eddie Eddie Sanchez and Jason Lambert. They were like our two UFC guys, my main uh, training partners. And then like Travis Brown joined the team, and then uh, we had a good little run together. And then and then something happened. I can't remember what happened, but anyways, me and Travis ended up going to Alliance. And this was like way before. This was like I met Phil Davis like right after his first fight, and so we've been training together since back then. It's funny and, uh, you mentioned yeah. Travis Brown. We were actually going to get into something later talking with Jessica Penne about a time. So you used to train with Travis. You and him are boys, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you've met Menace before, right? Oh, yeah. I'm sure I have passed, but I get hit in the head a lot, so I tend to forget stuff. Same. Yeah, Menace is a featherweight. Menace tried to fight Travis. No, before. I didn't try to fight him. Bro, it, it, you know how the telephone game works. It, it, in some people's stories, you almost got into an altercation with Travis Brown because you turned down a shot. It's a no, real thing. I wasn't gonna. T- I wasn't gonna. I was gonna try to fight him before I was taking the shot. That's it. I didn't say I was going to fight him. Yeah. Tell tell Joey the story. No, nah, he was. You know, he's a fucking giving guy. He buys shots for everybody. Everybody takes a shot, and then we're having Jessica Penne on in a little bit, and uh, Jessica decides she doesn't want to take her shots. Her shot. So Travis looks at me and goes, "Hey, you're gonna take her shot." I'm like, "Yeah," because no, I'm fucking not. And I looked at him, and he's like, "No, you're gonna, no, you gotta take it." And I went back to Jessica, I'm like Jessica, in her ear, I'm like, "Listen, I need you to take this shot from me because I'm not taking it. Like I'm going to jump on this fucking bench right here and crow hop him before I take the shot because I can't do it. I'll throw up everywhere." And she was like, "Fine, I'll take it." And that was that. So that somehow turned into I almost fought Travis Brown. <laughs> Man. You know, I could see how that would be interpreted. Well, <laughs> my my, you know. my co-host here is a ninny. Bro. Well, the thing it's is, funny, I wasn't. It's funny, you say, it's funny that you say that, you know, because there was another time where Travis almost got a fight with some smaller guys. We were at, we were watching um, Dominic and Uriah fight in, in UFC. So once again, this is fucking years and years ago. But there was like an alliance, bro behind fucking Danny Castillo and some of the mm, alpha male boys. Mm-hmm. And and the whole time, Danny Castillo was like, you're a fucking pussy, Dominic. You're a fucking pussy. And, like, we were like, whatever, like, just kind of blowing it off. And then at the end, when Dominic won, like, we were like, oh, what's up? Who's a fucking bitch now, motherfucker? And then, like, so Travis and Castillo were like, I was like, oh, here we go. Now we're going to fight a bunch of little guys. This is going to look real good. Well, <laughs> But I, nothing ever happened. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think Travis ever thought anything of it. He was just like, nah, I, I, I'm being a nice guy, making this guy a gamish drink. But I was just like, I don't do <laughs> shots. So the fact that I did the first shot was like incredible on its own. And then he's like, no, you're going to do another one. I'm like, ah, no, I'm not. <laughs> and I, hang on, it wasn't going to be a fight. It was going to be me hitting him and then me running like yeah. through the club out of there. <laughs> well, even it, the conversation had gotten to that point where if you would have been like, listen, not doing it, he probably would have been like, you know what? You're a little shit. Like, you're a fucking asshole. Yeah. You know what I mean? It would have yeah. escalated had Jessica Penne not stepped in wow. and been like, I'll take the shot he got for me and save you here, Menace. Yeah. I got Mike, you. Mike boils down to Jessica Penne in certain fights. That's really uh, nice. Troublemaker. Why'd she do that? Well, she's alliance too, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. forgot, actually, Travis Brown used to be out there for a minute. Remember, he used to have like that. He used to move around like a like a featherweight, you know, Domo. back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's actually like different 
different times on the team. Like me and Travis were there. Travis left, and then like then I left for a little bit and like went and started training at up in Huntington with uh, with Tiki <clears throat> with Tiki Ghost and Paul Herrera. And and that's when I left. That's when all the girls joined Alliance, like Angela Hill and, and Jessica Penne and, and Rowdy Beck. Mm. So I kind of like missed that whole. Uh, now is the executioner a single vibe. lad? What was that? Is the executioner no. a single lad? No, 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 um, not anymore. What? Okay. You know, I, How I, long have I, you been I, with your lady? Oh, well, I have a new girl, but oh. she'll remain, remain nameless, you know, it's all good. But okay. I, I, yeah, I got divorced, like, fuck, like a year ago, and then went through that whole fucking shit, uh, like, trying to trying to work it out. And kids then involved? It, like, no, no, oh, no. Good. Stepkids, which still sucks, because yeah. I literally have no rights. I have no rights, and I was fucking, I fucking raised them for 10 years, but uh. whatever. It's all good. It's all part of life. Is there yeah, anything you can, like, teach anybody from this right now? Is there any advice that you can give me right now, like, not to, for this to happen to me? Well, I mean, I, yeah, I, mean, I could go on for days. It's funny. It's, it's funny. We days. have a little bit of time. <laughs> I would say, honestly, not to be, it may come across as being an asshole, but if you're going to get involved, with a lady with kids just under understand that if you guys do break up that's going to be double or triple the heartbreak because you're fucking ending a relationship with those kids yeah and that fucking sucks yeah so, all right enough with the serious shit all right <laughs> all right yeah we'll go into something else so now the executioner bare knuckle boxing ufc fighter you have some boxing fights too right some what fights boxing fights as well no I'm Every time, like I, I was started getting ready to do a boxing match. Like MMA would come calling back, and it would just make way more financial sense to do that. Mm. But right. um, what about street I fights? I definitely, I definitely want to after after this brown knuckle contract's done. What about street fights? Oh yeah. Okay. Too many. I mean, definitely a lot. Like so, by the time I started fighting professionally, it wasn't a foreign act to me. All right. So, can you give us your top two? Street fights you've ever been in. Why it happened, what? where it happened, how old you were, how far in your <laughs> like fight career you were, if you were at all, who else was involved, the whole kit and caboodle. All right, I can give you like a, a couple, like funny one. So the yeah, funny one, and lie if you want like to. Last, I don't give a the shit. Last time, the last time that I actually got into a, a, a fist fight before I started training, so. We were uh, we we're at this bar and like in Carlsbad, the city that I'm from. There's like in a span, literally like, in the span of like two miles. There's probably like 20 bars, okay, and so like it's that. called it's called the, it's it's called the Carlsbad Crawl. Like you, you like you, you know. So that's just what we did, like every you know every you know, four nights a week. So, anyways, one night I'm walking home, and uh, me and the girl that I was talking to at the time, or whatever, we're like walking to the after bar, the after bar party. Okay. And I see like I see my, my my two homies like squared up with this guy, and I'm like, oh, and I'm I'm literally like have a burrito in my hand, and I'm like, walk up like a spectator, and I'm sitting there like watching guys argue. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there eating my burrito, and the guy looks at me, and he goes, "What are you gonna do, fat ass?" Oh. And I was like, <laughs> oh man, I just put my burrito on the ground, and just walked up, uh, one hitter quittered him, and the best part is that the girl that he was with. Like looked at him on the ground, like stood over. She's like, "God damn it, not again!" Idiot. Again, <laughs> Jesus. So he, this dude just stays like run his mouth to the wrong motherfuckers. How oh, how boy. um how far into your fight career was this? That was that was literally like maybe a like a month or two before my first fight. Ever since ever since I started fighting, right? Like I've right. never been in an altercation, right? Only only like. <laughs> and I'll tell that story too. It's funny. <laughs> um, it's because I freaking went. I went through some pretty bad, through some pretty through uh, through some pretty rough times a couple of years back, mm -hmm. and kind of lost control with my partying because. So I fought for Bellator in December 2016, and I lost by knockout to fucking Alessio Sakara. And then after that, I was like, "Well, I suck, so I'm done." 
And I'm, I went and I started working at a UFC gym, but I started killing it in the sales and commissions and fucking salary and everything it was great. It was a great setup. And I just, I, without having the, uh, without having like the obligation to, uh, to go and fight and train, like I was just, I just ran rampant. It took about eight months or so for me to lose control of my life. And I had to check into a recovery center and everything. I went there for like five months, got my, got, Got everything realigned, got out, got an AA, and been doing that pretty consistently. And, and anyways, on to, on to a new way of life. So I'm now I'm fucking, I'm not training. I'm not doing anything. I'm just working for a Hunter Steakhouse. It's a steakhouse in, in my city. So I'm just like working like a normal job, like fucking going and working the grill on the catering crew. Okay. So I would, get, I would get spotted all the time, too. People would fucking come and take pictures of me like fucking while I'm working. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Whatever. You're like, wait, wait, what are you doing here? I was like, I'm fucking working. What does it look like? Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and so we're there. We're on time. When we're... Oh, we lost you. Concert. I'll always remember. Really stupid concert. Wait, and they fucking... you're, you're, you're a Snoop, you oh, are a Snoop like, Dogg got, concert? Got... No, slightly stupid. Oh. It's like a reggae band, white reggae band. You okay. Know? Okay. Got you it. You know, like want to be sublime. Yeah. Type deal. So we we're there, we we're working, and and we had like a three hour line, no joke, fucking three hours nonstop. And we finally start getting to the end of it, and uh, then our credit card machine dies. Uh. And so, I'm like, it's not our fucking fault. The credit card machine died, and this girl and and like her boyfriend or whatever, they just start fucking get all loud and, and fucking yapping, talking shit, and they're like. My cashier was this little girl, not little girl, she's like 19, but spicy little Mexican girl. Okay. And I'll, and I'll always remember it in my head, I was thinking, I was like, I bet Erica's going to escalate this. And and sure as shit, like they were talking shit, boom, boom, and I just heard her like, you know what? You don't have to fucking talk to me like that, motherfucker. <laughs> like, blah, blah, blah. And then here, I was like, here we go. Uh... And, then, and then I walk over and I was like, hey, you know, like, we have some words with the guy, and the guy's like, you know, <clears throat> what are you going to do, motherfucker, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, really? I was all, boom, I took out my apron, walked out to the front. I was all, make a move, homie. What's your fucking problem? And, and he's like, he's like, you really want to do this? I was like, oh, right when he said that, I just grabbed him by his shirt. I was like, come here. I was like, you're fucking embarrassing yourself. Get out of here. Get out of here. And then I went back to went back into my little workstation. You gave him a chance. I did. I went back to my little workstation. Uh, I'm starting to. I'm starting to carve my meat, making my fucking tri-tip sandwiches like a like a professional. Right. And then I look back, and this motherfucker came into our little work booth, like our little, you know, like you've been seeing the, at the fair. Or, yeah. Like the food station. He, he fucking came to our workstation. Uh, we have knives and everything back there, nice. and I fucking, oh, I saw him. I was like, oh no, you're done. I fucking grabbed him by his fucking neck and his face, lifted him off the ground, and fucking. Threw him out, and I remember I, as I had him by his neck and his face, he was yelling. He's like, "You're gonna get arrested! You're gonna get arrested!" Oh my god! Oh, you fucking punk! That guy. And was... then I, I threw him on the ground. And I looked up. Right when I looked up, I seen like two fucking teenagers with their cell phones out. I was like, "Oh shit!" Uh... <laughs> I fucking, I just. You better I freaking delete like, that. Oh, I'm out of here. You better and freaking then, like, delete the that. The, the funny thing is, is like I wonder how many people. That those fucking those those assholes would just like treat bad, and then one day they picked the fucking wrong booth. <laughs> That's too funny. Wrong... Even the other guy picked the wrong guy that one day. Oh, he was like, "What are you gonna do, guess, fat now. boy?" Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, so that... it's funny you think I'm fat. Like I'll break your but nose. That's my perfection. What'd you say? You broke up a little bit. I said so. That was like the last time, the first and the last time, really, that I've had to do anything. Unless I was getting paid for it. Yeah, I don't fight for free. That's one of my things. Smart man. Yeah. I fight for free, Joey. I like fighting sometimes. Well, no one wants to pay you to fight, Stan, so. Eh. <laughs> one day they might have wanted to. Yeah. So what's going on next for you, Joey? Back to bare knuckle boxing? Oh, you know what? Actually, um, I'm actually taking a little uh, road trip out to Russia. 
to do uh, an MMA fight. Okay. And okay. Yeah, yeah, for this uh, Sambo League 70. I don't know. It's like a big show out there, like Putin goes. So I'm like, oh, whatever. Um, <clears throat> Putin's you know, there. It must be like, legit, you know? Yeah, exactly. And it's it's at, like, it's out in Sochi, so we get to stay, like, in the by the Olympic Village. and So we'll see. At the Olympic Training Center, that's where we have access to training for the whole fight week and get our food provided for us. So I'm excited. You know, I went out there not too long ago to fight in uh, Yekaterinburg, Russia, but that was in the middle of the fucking winter, and that sucked. Yeah, probably cold but, as fuck. Oh, my horrible, horrible. I, the first time I went out without the long john underwear, I was like, oh, I'll be fine. I was like, fuck that, dude. Mistake. That yeah, was a was mistake. Because, like yeah, dude, I, I, your Mexican blood runs through your fucking veins, dude. Yeah, I did not know. I, I underestimated it. <laughs> Damn. Now, where are you training at now? You're back at Alliance? Uh, You know, I've been training a lot, just kind of where I need to get it in. I'm still staying on top of my boxing because uh, – you know, uh, Bare Knuckle will be happening, I believe, in October, late October, early November, one of the two. I don't have the exact date on that one. Um, so, got to stay on top of that and just working out my grappling at the planet side with uh, tutelage of Gio Martinez. So, definitely just sharpening sharpening that up. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's a freaking fist fight. So, I'm fine. I'm confident. Oh, for sure. So, now... Uh, you're also working with Caleb Rogers, right? With who? Caleb Rogers, yeah. the mental sensei. Oh, absolutely. That's my dude. Abs- that guy's a... F- yeah, man. I've shared a little bit about, like, if if I coincidentally, like, at the tail end of, of my marriage, uh, <clears throat> my wife, my ex-wife was like, you got to go see somebody. You're fucking crazy blah 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 and then like coincidentally like caleb caleb hit me up on instagram same so i checked out his i checked out his page and saw who he was working with i was like all right i'll give this guy a shot and then like yeah man like from day one he's been helping me like just process just life in general you know early on it wasn't even about competing it was just like just finding balance in my life so that i could go to the gym and actually get something out of my sessions and then like you know, when it came time to to get ready for the fight camp, like man, it's just a, uh, you would think after all these years of, of fighting professionally, I would have done something like this. But for whatever reason, I never did. You know, and I had I've read books and and gone and seen a sports psychologist, like you know, kind of sporadically throughout the years, but never like had like basically like a training regimen, like he puts us through, like and. Yeah, man, it definitely paid off, I feel. Like, as far as, even if I would have lost, like, let's say I would have gone out there and slipped on a banana peel and lost, but, like, the way that I felt during the whole fight week, which is normally a fucking such a nerve-wracking few days, like, just total state of relaxation and knowing, like, knowing what I was there to do and, you know, I had put in the work to do it. and Now I just got to go out and actually have fun and enjoy and perform in front of everybody. Yeah. No, uh, Caleb is definitely, he's, he's dope, you know, and I remember like, and it's, it's like when you have a session with him, it's whatever's on your damn mind, you know? So it could be your training session that day. It could be cause your weight's high. It could be that fucking you're having lady problems, you know, and, and yeah. he'll kind of break it down and you'll talk about whatever. And, and it's crazy. Cause sometimes like. When you talk to your homies and and uh, like yo, I'm having a problem with with so and so, and she's doing this and that. Like, your homie might go and tell another homie that knows her. It's just like, but like, when you talk to someone that doesn't know any of your friends, it's almost like a diary that you're, you know. And he kind of jots it down, and he'll bring it back up if if you if he feels necessary for you to fuel you for whatever you know the 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 goal is, you know. So. um yeah, he's he's yeah. he's helped me through some shit as well. Oh yeah, you know, like <clears throat> yeah, it's definitely like a different 
That's exactly what it's exactly what it sounds like. It's like a mental coaching, like those, and you hear about it, like like that cliche, oh, fighting's you know, twenty percent physical, eighty percent mental, you know. But yeah, like, yeah, like not. I'm sure there's a lot of us just kind of floating around, just figuring figuring it out on our own, you know. Yeah. Like, well, like you, like you said like, before, you didn't know why you did it earlier. There's this like kind of macho man, you know, aspect to fighting, you know, where we, that's part of why we got to where we are is because we did it. We did it on ourselves, you know, and not that having someone else tell you like, Hey, you know, you're good here. or Hey, like, this is what you should be doing. Like mentally, like we think we're stronger than that. That's why we're here that in the first place, would you agree with that to a certain yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, there's, there's kind of like, like that, uh, that, 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 oh, I, I got this mentality. Right, I got this. I got right. this. Right. Where, uh, and I speak with a lot of fighters and stuff like that. And like, you know, when the, it's fight week, I'm like, hey, man, how you feeling? And like, I feel great. I feel good. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Like, yeah, you probably, <laughs> your body probably feels good. You probably feel like you're in good shape. But, like, be honest with me, dude. You probably have demons fucking screaming through your head of every worst-case scenario and da 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 you know? Like, you can only tuck those guys away so far, <laughs> you know? And I feel like the higher you get up the ladder, the fucking stronger those motherfuckers get. Yeah. Those demons in your head. I, I agree. I agree 100%. Yeah, you're dealing with more and more people and more and more pressure. Mm-hmm. For sure. But that's why you guys found the right guy in Caleb uh, Rogers, the mental sensei. Yeah, we're going to get him on next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my dude, man. Like, I, like just the way, <clears throat> like, even though, um, like, we were about maybe a week or two before the actual, my last bare knuckle fight, and then. It was like a, a hornet's nest got kicked up in my personal life. And it was almost, uh, I'm pretty sure it was almost like as if my ex-wife knew, like, oh, this is one last chance to fuck with him. I don't know. Maybe I'm just assuming that. But whatever. Like, and Caleb, like, always, like, helped me process it. And then all of that, always go back to, okay, what's our physical game plan? What's our physical goal for this fight? And then what's our mental goal? Like, you know, we're going to use our emotions to fuel us and, and you know, project, you know, because there's, the way he put it, like, there's always going to be energy, whether it's be negative or positive, like, but, but we can use that energy to, you know, to propel us towards our goal. Right. And like, you know, it's, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't foreign. They, they weren't like foreign concepts to me. Like I had gone to like, <laughs> right. couple, I, yeah, but it was just like having somebody kind of like hold you accountable, like, for, like do your little, men your little homework assignments throughout the week. And, right. You know, it was, yeah, man, definitely yeah. something, I, you know, could have, should have, would have, I wish I would have met him a long time ago, but it's For all sure. good. I still got, I got some. We still got some miles, some, some gas left in the tank, so yes. we're gonna push it for all it's worth. For sure. No, because I follow this guy Gary V, and uh, you know, he just says like shit that I know, but like I don't know something like like it's almost like oh yeah, like yeah yeah he's right. You know, but like you already know it. It's almost like, let's say, like you haven't used a Kimura in fucking years. And I'm like, yo, I check out this new move. And I hit you with Kimura. Like, oh, yeah, I know the Kimura. And oh, that's a good way to use it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, good idea. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like you yeah. already know, you already know the shit. It's just like, ah, oh, I just forgot. Or, you know, I was so busy with everything else that I just forgot that that was important anymore, you know? Yeah. Well, remember even we were uh, talking to Steve Maraboli and he said like, you know, parents will tell kids things and they won't listen. Then if Steve Maraboli says it, remember he used the example of Bon Jovi. Right. Like Bon Jovi's telling me to live my life. The parents are like, I've been telling you this your whole fucking life. <laughs> right, right, right. Sometimes it's someone different that can get the message. You know, you could say the same message to your kid and I could say the same message to your kid. But because you're their dad and I'm not, my message gets through. Oh, yeah, for sure. But the same exact message, you know? Yeah. It's crazy. Absolutely. Crazy how the brain works. That we we'll won't, we'll won't take the advice when we're giving it, but we'll take it when it comes from the right source. Is basically <laughs> what it is. All right. Uh, 
So when's this fight? When you heading out to Russia? I'm uh, leaving on Saturday. <clears throat> it's actually on uh, Wednesday, uh, the 14th. Oh, so you're about to fight next week. Oh, so are you ready? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is Russia ready Andy, for the Mexicutioner or what? Yeah, I've been there before. The funny thing is, is I, I went out there and that was like my resurgence of my, my career because I, okay, so like I came out of rehab and I was like driving for Amazon and just like hating life. Amazon fucking slave drivers. Those poor people you see driving on the white vans or the gray vans, they have like literally like 400 stops every day. Yeah. And I did, I was doing that, I was doing it for a while, and I was like, uh, then my old manager hit me up randomly, and he's like, hey, your name keeps coming up out here in Russia, uh, I'm doing business with Brandon Halsey out there a lot, and, and they asked about you, I was like, well, you know, see what they say, he's like, are you in shape? I was like, ah, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> keep it. Keep in mind, I was not at all. I was like fresh out of fucking rehab, like 275 pounds, and I was like, "Yeah, let's do it, whatever." And then, and then he called me like a couple days later, and he's like, "All right, five weeks, Sergey Karatana, are can you do it?" I was like, "How much?" All right. And I was like, oh, I was like, "Well, what do they say?" He's like, "20 and 20." I was like, "I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> let's do it." Yeah. And fucking um. That's why. So I got ready in five weeks as fast as I could and went out there and went all three rounds with him and busted him up with some elbows. And I felt really good about myself. I was like, all right, I still have some gas in the tank. Let's do it. Wow, so uh, sure. and he, then I started, tra I started training, trying to get MMA fights. And for whatever reason, I couldn't get any love on the regional scene. Like, I don't know why. I, to this day, I don't know why. But maybe it was meant to be. And then the bare knuckle people came out of, the, came out of left field. And that ended up working out. Oh, yeah. And I've so, seen you you're crushing it in bare knuckle. You're doing good. Yeah, man. I'm, it's fun. You have a for great style fun. for like, it. Exactly, man. Like, it was, like, meant for me. So, I mean, I I learned the first couple fights, like, <clears throat> I came back home up full of my face, full of stitches. And then these last two... I've uh, done a really good job changing the game up, just adding a lot more head movement, tighter defense, and you know, it's just a brand new game. You know, it's not boxing, it's not MMA, it's its whole individual sport. Yeah, because you could like dirty box in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh fuck, yeah, you can. Yeah, I think that's amazing. Yeah, it's fun. So I like it. One last thing before we let you go: What's your favorite fast food? My favorite fast food. Yep. Carl's Jr., 100%. Carl's Jr.? No questions asked. No questions asked? I didn't think they're here on Long Island. They're not. Have you had them? Ah, they're see. good. I remember when I went the first time I had Carl's Jr., I went to California. I had Are they only on the West Coast? No, no. They're, they're called Hardee's. Oh, yes. I've had, I've had Hardee's in Pennsylvania. Yeah, 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 yeah. Their it's curly fries Hardee's. are fucking bomb as yeah. fuck. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, what, yeah. I'll which Matt, like... <laughs> What's your go-to? There's a <clears throat> the superstar or the big Carl, right. depending on what kind of mood I'm in. All right. You know, the big Carl is kind of a knockoff on a playoff of the uh, Big Mac, so it kind of has like that Thousand Island sauce on it. Okay. Really, really good. Okay. But the superstar is like the classic big ass double patty burger, just all bad for you, but all good. Got you. Not Delicious. not an in and out guy, huh? I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not. You like it, but it's not. I'm it's, not going to turn down in and out. But, but I mean, not your number one. Choice, yeah, I'm right. going to Carl's Jr. All right, I like it. Thank you. Well, yeah, when I went to the West Coast, I had in and out, and I had Carl's Jr. like separate days. In and out, fucking trash compared to Carl's Jr. Really? Yeah, I wasn't a fan. It tasted like it's, White Castle <laughs> to me. Yeah, I, I liked know. it. You know. I don't know. I like White Castle. Don't get me wrong. I love White Castle, actually. Oh, but now it's burger talk. I want like it a tasted burger. like White Castle to me. Like at first, I was gonna, I was thinking you were gonna say like Taco Bell, and I was like, man, I could really fuck some Taco Bell. But now you got me totally wanting a burger. Now you got you got us ready to drive to Pennsylvania to get Hardee's. Not going there. It was a joke. Well, it was a bad one, Stan. There you go. You Second me, time you in know a row. Me with my bad joke. Second day in a row with a bad joke. Well, that those are only my couple of ones that fail are the ones that you notice. You're not noticing the good ones. Nah, you you're suck. Laughing. You suck.
Uh, maybe I do. <laughs> All right, Joey Beltran, <laughs> you're the man. Thank you for joining us here on Medicine the Man. Hey, hey thanks for having me on, guys. It was fun. And yeah, go, for sure, man. Go to Russia and get that bag. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where can people watch it? That I do not know, but, I mean, they can follow me on social media, and then okay. I'm going to post the links so that I know. Where am I? I think I'm Joey Beltron MMA on Instagram, and then on Facebook, just Joey Beltron. Yeah, it's pretty easy to find. I'm pretty easy to find. All right. I like it. Hell yeah. Go follow the executioner. He's going to get it done in Russia. Beautiful. All right, man. We'll catch you All later, right, bro. Fellas, thank you. Have a good one. Shake and bake. Peace. What were you trying to say to me? I said, uh, write his his thing in in the comments. Oh, the executioner, write his uh, contact yeah. info. So there's this dude that used to train at Rain called the Joker, all tatted up. There is a possibility I was confusing the two of them. Who is this? The Joker? Yeah. Who is that? This like Mexican dude that was all inked up. He had a dope car. I think he might have fought for Bellator at some point. The Joker. The Joker. Is his name like Mike Gunman? I think he's small. Bald dude? Yeah. I think he was smaller though. He's a white dude. Or he might have been Spanish. This guy looks for... Mexican to me. I don't know. Well, I don't know. I've definitely met the Mexicaner in my life. I think him and the Joker used to roll a little bit. And like he used to train at rain. I used to train at rain a little bit, so you feel like you've seen him before yeah. or met him. Yeah. I mean, S smelled his sweat. Like, yeah, like one of these, like, yeah. What's up? Not like, oh my freaking God. Like, and then he walked past, like, who the fuck you was that guy? You fucking friends? Yeah, probably like, who's this fucking little bitch? Or you guys were like Latin, Spanish nah. people, and not heads towards each other? I don't know. Yeah, there's no, there's not respect there. It's not I, one of those I things. I don't know. I'd walk in the gym like I fucking owned it. What, used to walk in terrain like you nah, wanted? No, just in general, wherever the fuck I went. Like, if I'm there to train, fucking show up, like. I feel like that's anywhere I you wouldn't go. even look at, like, big, like, if you were a big guy, I wouldn't even look your direction, because I, there's nothing, I, I don't need anything from you. Yeah. I'm not training with you. Okay, okay. Like, I'm looking at, like, my dudes I'm been training with, like, yo, you want to smoke? So you want to use your thing for Jessica Penne? Mmm... Because I'm on lower percentage yeah, at the moment. I'm pretty low, too. What are you at? Doesn't say. Oh, you're one of those who doesn't keep it on there? Yeah, it's a little fucking... Why do you do it like that? I don't know. Maybe because I'm a rebel? <laughs> what do you think about that? I don't know. I, would, I can't live that life. I need to know my percentage so I know when I got to hook up. Does it give you alerts when you don't do it that way of like the 20 and the 10? Yeah. Okay, okay. So you're not living as dangerously as I thought. Yeah. Hi. Oh, hi. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> Say hi, Stan. Hello, Jessica Penny. Welcome back to Menace and the Man. Hey, thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. Jessica, are you talking to Stan on the low? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, who's on? Who do we got today? He's like, Jessica Penny. I was like, oh, word. <laughs> you guys sneaking behind my back? That's my mm -hmm. home girl. Sorry. Hey, Stan, she's coming to uh, the East Coast soon. For what? Go on, Jessica. Um, I will be there on the for the 16th the CFFC card. Oh, um, you do I'm the ring announcing the or call commentary? No, I do behind the scenes interview, and they'll they'll let me hop in with the guys and do some color sometimes too. Oh, Super fun. So, Jess, is that like where we're going with this? I see you. Yeah. You know, in LA. I mean, why not? Dip. You got the look. You got the knowledge. You got the. You know, you're well spoken. Oh, I thank you so much. Yeah. You're so kind. Hey, you're welcome. You're welcome. I agree. It's a new. It's a new thing for you. It's like really nice. I like it. A new thing from me? Yeah, being nice. And giving <laughs> compliments. Like, I appreciate it. I'm no, always nice. <laughs> I mean, I'll still break your leg, but I'm really nice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we were talking earlier about how, like, if I don't like you, I don't make, I won't make fun of you. That's a dear form of, of love from 
much. I, for me, if I don't make you cry, I don't really love you. So I'm still like trying to learn a balance of like, you know, when to pull it back. Like, you know, just, you if know, I you don't, don't want to make you the people cry, that you love. I don't love you. Yeah. I get like, <laughs> I make people really uncomfortable. Um, I was just, I'm at the PI right now and I was just hanging out with my good friend, Justine. Um, and we've known each other. We just had like our six year anniversary of like friendship. Um, From tough. part of the reason we've, yeah. Yeah. And part of the reason um, we've had such like a good long-standing friendship is because it's like a long-distance friendship. Right. But like whenever we see each other, we just like we talk crap to each other and we're like really rude to each other, but in a very loving way. And it, I realize like I make people or we make people uncomfortable with our interactions because they don't really know us. Right. So sometimes we go too far. So poor Clint Montenberg, he like looked at both Oof. of us like really awkwardly and just was like. Okay, bye, and just like walked away. I was like, "Oh yeah, I forgot." Clint Wattenberg you know? is the nutritionist at the UPI for everybody. Yes, and he's he's absolutely amazing, so knowledgeable. It's, oh, it's awesome. So that he's sick here for us. So sick. Yeah. Um, man, hang on, Jess. I don't think you're ever going to make me cry. Maybe, well, maybe you don't, you you don't, don't love me that know. much. That that could be that too. Ooh. Yeah. So maybe I. Ooh, that oh, might be it. Maybe I'm wow. taking the hint here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess you thought we were closer than we were. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I know, Dennis. That's as far as. It goes. I'm actually. Hey, I actually might go upstairs tonight and cry myself to sleep. So. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you didn't make me cry. <laughs> I'm like, Stan. <laughs> <laughs> Listening back to the episode, like, was yeah. she joking or was she being serious? <laughs> oh man! Uh, shit. No, Jessica Penny seems like a sweetheart, but I can see that little attitude that she has going. Oh no! Yeah, she is the the sweetest, meanest girl you'll ever meet. Yeah. Oh, thank you. She's got like these like little dolly eyes, and she has a <laughs> smile to her, and then she'll her mouth will open up. You're like, oh. Okay. Oh, it's like that. <laughs> and then you'll watch her fight, and you're like, oh, okay. She actually doesn't even care about anything. <laughs> yeah. Any fights on the horizon for you, Jessica? No, no. I'm I'm working through some stuff. I, I injured my ankle in... I, I saw that. Like... Uh, yeah, I am so coordinated and just, you know, so athletic that I sprained my ankle very severely warming up for my fight in February. So it's been on. Um, oh, that's right. Of... Like the day before the fight, right? Or like the day like before day of the it was fight. like the day of. It was yeah. like the morning warm up. Um, it was it's been rough. But um, yeah, just working through some stuff um, and hoping to be fighting by the end of the year but you know sometimes life throws curveballs at you but luckily i have some you know other stuff i'm working on like cffc and i love doing the commentary and um behind the scenes stuff and the analyst work in studio it's amazing and that's you know what i'm hoping to transition into for during and post fighting hey i'm all about it i'm full bore team penne fucking get her give her the mic Oh, Dennis, I Give love her you. The fucking mic. <laughs> yes, Otherwise, she'll tell him. fucking take it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll stab you with it. You That's know? all you need. Like, give me the mic, and someone like resists you on the mic, and then arm bar. Wow. <laughs> Wrist lock. Yeah. I do love me an arm bar, you know? Nah, I see her fucking throwing, using her goddamn judo throws lately. They've been popping I, up on I the love IG. Love the judo. Love the judo. The and f- I have an awesome judo coach, so, you know, can't go wrong there. So how's the ankle doing? Is the healing, is it coming along or setbacks? It, it is. We've had, yeah, I've had um, some setbacks and just not healing right. But um, there's an amazing new, um, uh, she's a chiropractor. and um, At the UPI is, uh, or in at the Cali? Yeah, at the PI. And I just by chance, like I love how life works out, but just by chance I ended up um, coming in uh, to the PI. I thought I was just going to. Um, come to Vegas for the weekend and leave and then opportunity came around so I was like you know I'm going to go to the PI I'm going to get some some work done and she like increased my mobility by by a lot so I'm really excited um, yeah. and then you know gave me somebody to see in California because I really haven't been doing the, the proper um, like rehab on it so I'm, yeah. I'm definitely excited yeah. it's so like we said we are friends 
and we <laughs> make fun of each other from time to time. So with that being said, oh, God. you are no spring chicken. How many more? How much longer are you going to stay in the game? You know, I don't know. It's it's um, you're just feeling it out. I am. I'm feeling it out. I've had um, I've been fighting for over a decade and I've had, um, you know, recently just, you know, the past few years have been a lot of setbacks in my competitive life. Yeah. However, like it has given me so much time to work on myself internally. Right. And I feel, you know, very mentally, emotionally, physically strong. I mean, minus the ankle thing, but I just feel like I'm in a really good place and I'm really excited to compete for a while. Um, competition became really exhausting and I, and I didn't want to do, it and I was just working through so much stuff. Yeah. But, um, I started, you know, I took my, my long layoff as an opportunity to work on what I've been neglecting most of my life. And that's the internal stuff. And it's, um, it's really made like a huge difference in me. So right. Cause I'm we definitely excited. The last time we had you on, you were, you touched on that a little bit and I was like, Oh, is that why you're a cold person? That's nice, but funny, but fucking will kill you. <laughs> because <laughs> the thing is she puts up these like uh these memes on her instagram i'm like yep that's exactly her no i love her memes like why are you fucking looking at me i'm trying to drink my coffee <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> well i mean now i just have to make fun of myself i mean that's you know that's definitely part of myself and it used to really hold me back and now i've you know completely embraced it and i make fun of it and i make light of it and i allow people to you know talk shit and make fun of it too because it, it really did like completely stop me from you know having you know relationships friendships um job opportunities all sorts of things that really blocked me so now i just make fun of it right and I embrace it you know you gotta you yeah gotta because it. like you know the fat kid that doesn't think he's fat and if you make fun of him being fat he like gets all pissed off no one likes that fucking kid but the fat kid Nobody. that makes but the fat kid that makes fun of himself because he's fat everybody loves that kid <laughs> right is that is that i just hit that on the nail no that is that is so spot on that is like the Thank perfect <laughs> that's that's a great analogy but um Thank you. yeah i've just really learned to not take myself so seriously or things so seriously or personally you used to take everything personally and that's like part of the walls are you eating like food while you're talking to me that's really rude what are you doing no <laughs> <laughs> what are you eating sorry i just <laughs> you couldn't help yourself you hungry big boy no uh huh? yeah well, no, I was looking at myself in the screen and I have a tower of G fuel and I noticed I had some sweet tarts, extremely sour, chewy, leaned up against the tower. And I was like, man, those have been there for like three weeks. I should eat them. <laughs> 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 They're gone now. So you have the attention span of Annette. Good job. Um, I was listening. So don't pay Dennis. Are we line. talking about? I was listening the whole time. But we, I heard we, you mention Justine Kish, and we talked a little bit on Instagram. I would love to get a couple of the girls from Tough Twenty on to reminisce about. Mm -hmm. Heard that, man. You know what? I was literally just in the locker room at the PI having like a, a dance and sing party in our towels. Um, so only, if she comes down, only, only, only towels. You. That sounds pretty hot, actually. Who are oh. you with? <laughs> It was just with Justine. It was just the two of us, and we scared some some of the gals that you know came in and out of the locker really quickly. Um, but you know, we have fun. We always have fun. Sames. We try. Me and me and Stan actually dance in just our towels over here and there, right? Yeah. I was gonna say, is that just a girl thing? Do guys do that? I feel like yeah. guys do that undercover. You no, know? I feel like <laughs> I feel like it's a it's just a locker room thing for like both sexes. Now, was there music or were you guys singing? There, there was music. Um, what was yes, the song? There was. What, what was the song that got your feet moving? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't even remember. Justin, Justin Timberlake. <laughs> No, it was more like the never ending story or something like that. It was um might have even been like Rod Stewart or something. Who knows? Mm. Mm. Love me some Rod Stewart. So what's Jessica Penny's music choice? You seem like an eclectic uh, woman. Like what are you listening to? I love country. That's usually like yep. my go to, but yeah. I also am just like a sucker for the classics. Like I grew up listening to the Eagles and Fleetwood Mac and uh so I, I really stick to She shoots that. guns, Dan. Does she? Yeah. 
and I, I love shooting guns. Although since I've I've um, adopted horses a couple of years ago, I've like not been able to shoot as much. I think I'm still a pretty good shot. I Hang don't on. Know, oh yeah. Didn't, Here, didn't, wait, wait. Whoa. Didn't she take you shooting? <laughs> yeah, she took me shooting. You need to start shooting while riding, like a goddamn cowboy. <laughs> Now it's 2019, a cow person. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to assume your gender. That's what I was wondering, like cow, <laughs> like a cowboy woman. What do you call that? A cow lady. A cowgirl. A cowgirl. Yeah, How idiot. stupid are we? You didn't get it either. You, you don't were watch thinking. porn, Stan? <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> He's, so <laughs> He's probably married. They only have mommy daddy sex, which is missionary. That's probably all they do. He doesn't know about the the cowgirl stuff. Ooh, Stan, tell her what you know. No, I know a little bit about a lot, actually. <laughs> Stan, she said you're probably. Hang on, Stan's actually the the total opposite of married with kids. Yes. Really? Yeah, he hates girls. And... No, why would you say that? I hate girls. I don't hate women. I love women. I just don't want to love one woman. I want to love a bunch oh of them. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Hang on, just he actually needs like a he actually needs therapy. <laughs> well, I know a place out here in Vegas. Okay. When you're ready to start, you know, digging in and working on yourself, hit me up, Dan, and what? I'll and I'll give you the invite. Why do I need therapy, Dennis? What? Because I don't want to he, get married. Hang on, he got smoked by like two different chicks, and he's like, nah. Fuck girls, done with them. I'm like, all right. I didn't get smoked in like the sense oh, of like that my. I'm. The reason I got smoked because I didn't want to get married. Okay. Where does that come from? I don't know. I just don't want to get married. I see a lot of people get divorced. I see a lot of people have kids and then get divorced, and it doesn't look like it's an easy Well, thing. that doesn't necessarily mean it'll happen to you. I mean, we can't compare, you know. Mm. That's not Ooh. fair. That's not fair to you or Well, it's not else. fair to a significant other. Yeah, absolutely. Well, now the same token, he's probably not wrong because I watched Stan – with, like he'll be talking with a girl. I'm like, oh, nice. He's gonna hook up with her. Like sick. Like something they got something going good going on. Whatever. And then I'll go to the bathroom. I'll come back. There'll be a full blown fight. I'm like, Stan, <laughs> what? You just met this girl. It looked like she was going back to your place, and now you guys are actually in a fight. Like as if you guys were dating. What happened? He's like, she said that was blue. It's clearly, oh it's clearly green. Well, I mean, he wouldn't, he wouldn't fight over that. But what Stan's problem is, is like if something is not right, he has to let you know that it is right. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, like so you know what I've learned, um, and this is like a huge thing for me. When I'm trying to be right, I'm trying to make somebody else wrong, and nobody wants to. You know, right. told that they're wrong right. all the time. I'm not going to lie and just agree with some random girl in the bar just to take her home. Well, why even? That's like, exactly when just, you would you do know? it. I get that that's what I should be doing and what I want to do, but clearly it wasn't oh that God. girl. We just didn't gel uh. the way that we should have gelled. So let's have a little argument and go our separate ways. <laughs> but it's so funny. You'd be like, no, no. Fuck you. And I'm like, Stan, <laughs> what are you doing? Bro, I never Stan. say fuck you to a girl oh, like that. Oh, my gosh. I argue intellectually with women. Okay. Is how I play. Oh, no. It'll be like her friend will come up and back her up and be like, who are you? Why don't you get the fuck out of here? <laughs> <laughs> like, Stan, obviously her friend's coming over because you're, you know, you're flexing right now. Flexing hard. I'm not letting these girls Yikes. get away with, you know, lying. Saying so, stupid shit. um... Jess, I should have reached out on a personal note, but uh, you lost one of your pups. I did. Ludo. Oh, my baby boy. Yeah. Uh, like, and I, hang on. And then it like clicked for me because you got a new dog. Now, was that kind of planned? You know? No, I swear again, it's because Luda looked very like, like healthy and just moving and like a strong dog. How old was he? He was 10 and a half. And so I he mean, was up he, there. He was. But I mean, that's not nearly old enough, you know, um, for me, I thought I had you for know, you or for the you know, breed. At least, well, for me personally, um, I thought I had a couple more years at the very least, you know, because he I mean, he was, you know, a. A bully breed and they're they're kind of mixed so they tend not to have you know these severe you know health problems that can take him out early but he ended up um being diagnosed with osteosarcoma which is a very very aggressive uh bone cancer okay and so um i came back from 
from Coachella. I was working a CFFC event and he was limping while I was gone. And I was like, oh, you do this. Like, what did you do? You yeah, know, yeah, I mean, yeah. he's old and he's, yeah. he's like 105 pounds. I'm like, all right, Lap but dog. it didn't go away. Uh, <laughs> It didn't go away, so I took him to the vet, and they did an x-ray, and they're like, um, I'm really glad that you brought him in. Um, this is the diagnosis. It could be something else, but we're really sure it's this. So we did a, a few more tests, and um, they just they, – they let me know that I had a very limited amount of time with him. Right. Um, so that was fucking heartbreaking. I mean, I'm, yeah. still, I'm still heartbroken, but um, – Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was he was my baby. I was there on the day he was born and, and the day he passed. So he was very special, very special man in my life. Yeah. Um and then but prior to Ludo's, you know, passing, you had gotten this uh the a new dog, which is kind of I like did. he's like a, a German shepherd on steroids. <laughs> she's she's a Belgian shepherd, which okay. are um like uh, cousins with the German shepherds they and have the straight Dutch shepherds. Backs. Yes, they do, and um, they're very athletic. They're used like in in military, and they're um, service dogs. Super, super smart. Um, she's a very, very smart girl, and and luckily, like Ludo had some PTSD. He was attacked by by another dog, um, so he was very um, selective of what kind of personality type he would get along with with other dogs mm -hmm. and he took to her really quickly. And, um, I, again, I think like everything works out the way it's supposed to. And I think that, you know, she was a gift to me to help me, you know, and support me through yeah. like, his, his passing. So sure. it was, it was crazy timing and I'm very lucky to have her. And she's, um, she's been keeping me busy. She's super smart, super high energy, nothing, nothing like my old boy <laughs> who liked to nap and, and cuddle with me and she right. wants to go. So, yeah. <laughs> so the new girl, what's the girl's name? Her name is Astrea. She's named Astrea. after the Greek goddess of just of um, judgment. She's not a, she's not a lap dog. She is tiny enough to be a lap dog and she'll like cuddle sometimes, but she likes to go mostly. She's yeah. nine months old and, you know, has a, a lot of energy. So that German Belgian shepherd breed, they are constantly looking for direction and the next thing to do. Right. Yeah. And if you don't, they'll start breaking you. shit. <laughs> exactly. So you uh, have her with you all the, all the time or. Um, all the time she is, uh, she is like registered as a, a support dog and I have all of her documents so she can go anywhere with me. I didn't take her to Vegas this time just cause it's, it's too hot. So she's at home with a roommate. Okay. Um, but it's awesome having, like I went from having Ludo where like I had to be pretty lazy, careful. right? Here. Yeah. Um, to this active puppy where we'll go on like, you know, a three to six mile trail run. And then she's like, Hey, let's throw the ball. And I'm like, no, 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 let's take a nap. And she's like, no, 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 we're, we're going to do this. Otherwise I'm going to go like fuck something up. So come on, let's go. Oh my God. <laughs> so what has she, so obviously she's fucked some shit up. Yes. <laughs> go on. Um, <laughs> nothing, nothing terribly wrong, but I love gardening. I love my plants and this little, she is. Amazing. She actually is the definition oh, of a sure. bitch. Go ahead. You can call her that. This this little bitch <laughs> that I love so much. Uh, <laughs> um, had, like dug up some newly planted roses. She like <sighs> took some of my succulents out. She like rearranged a lot of my pots. And um, yeah. So so um, yeah. She's she's been a lot of fun. Keeps me on my toes. Yeah. Keeps you young again, right? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I saw something. Let me find it. It said something about how like a dog is like having a sugar daddy. Like when you have a dog. Except for they don't pay for shit. Yeah, like you're just paying, paying, paying. For... Oh, you're the sugar dog daddy. They're, yeah. they're a sugar baby. I'm a sugar yeah. mama. Yeah. Wow. It was funny. Let me find it. Oh, being, I mean, being a pet owner is like being a sugar daddy. You waste all your money on keeping them happy. And the only thing they do is look cute and give you attention sometimes. <laughs> wow that's probably going up on jessica's story tomorrow <laughs> you know why, why just forward it to her okay we'll do we'll yeah. do make it easier so all she has to do is just add it to her story right yeah i would love to i love posting stuff on my story like yeah. that so now what are you still in california or you're not living in vegas are you no i'm i'm just here we're gonna um head back home tonight. Uh, I think we're just going to stay for a couple fights of the contender series and then get out of here. That's right. That's tonight. 
Ooh, why don't yeah. you? What, you should get on Dana's uh, horn, get on his phone, and tell him you want to do some commentary for that. Ooh, ooh, that's a good idea. That's the only yeah, time I'm just we have to get here. Practice as much as possible. Yeah. When's the next CFFC? Um, it is August 16th in Atlantic City. Oh, so you'll be here soon. Are you here just for the weekend? For yeah, the 15th, 16th, and 17th. Okay. I was thinking maybe we can. Uh, are, are you guys still doing two straws? You know what we have, and we're trying to kind of reformat and play around with some other stuff. And Angela's fought like I think she's this. It'll be her fifth fight this year. Um. Jeez. So yeah, she's she's keeping herself busy and just really you know <laughs> really staying active. So it hasn't really given us much room for that. Well, when you're here, we should try to get together and do Menace and the Man. We'll get you in studio with us, and we'll no, call we Angela Hill. To, we would have to. We'd have to go to AC. Oh, she's... you would get to go to AC. That sounds like a great idea. You can meet me there. <laughs> we would get to go to AC. <laughs> mm-hmm. And see just and see the lovely Jessica Penny. Yeah. Pot- uh, hey, yeah. potential. Sounds like a fun time to me. Potential. And produce an episode of Two Straws for her and her BFF. Potential. Just, just think about it. You know. It's in the air. It's in the air. So what's okay, uh? Putting it out there. What's Jessica Penny's relationship status at the moment? Oh, so single. So single. <laughs> is is so single more single than just regular single yeah so single i have no time for that shit i am just not interested what if the right guy came along um go ahead no. pitch it P- pitch pitch your lines dan pitch my lines just yeah. penny yeah go ahead. what do you got <laughs> i don't have lines like that i just talk to them and if i have chemistry with them then i have chemistry with them Ooh. Yeah. oh and that's not where I was going with this until you just threw it in there. But. <laughs> right. Hey, Jessica, isn't that where it seemed like he was going with this? <laughs> no? I, I mean, maybe. Oh, all right. I was. So how about this? What's your type, Jessica? Um, I'm still figuring that out. Um, mm. My, my. Um, attractive. Well, obviously, yeah. Stan, you're Great out. Personality. I'm attractive. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> no. You know, I'm sure there's a height requirement, Dennis. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, that was too easy. Uh, me and Dennis have very corny jokes for each other. I usually make fun of his height and he just makes well, fun. Well, you could you know, you could put the argument that everyone's the same height when they're laying down, right, Stan? Oh, this is true. Whoa. This is true. <laughs> okay, back to Jessica Penne. <laughs> Give us a quick, <laughs> give us a quick little rundown. What does the guy look like who you might let you take? On does he drive motorcycles? Does he have tattoos? Is he uh, a professional athlete? Is he a, an actor? Is is he straight edge, blue collar, white collar? Does he have long hair? Is he clean <laughs> cut? Does he have a beard? Does he have a mustache? You know what? Maybe that is why. I am still single. I have to like really write down. I have to like, you know, put on my projection board, my manifestation mm. board, like what I'm looking for. Mm. Or you could put it out there right now. Put it out in the universe. You are menace in the man and maybe it'll come to fruition. Huh. <laughs> we were saying how I haven't gotten married. Maybe I just haven't met Jessica Penna yet. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. You are smooth, mister. I don't know how you're still single. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> It's a choice. Uh, I'm probably similar to Jessica. I don't want to the, uh, the term settling down okay. or just settle on someone. No, honestly, like, um, again, with like the self work, self work stuff, I've just realized so many patterns and, and stuff that isn't working. So when I'm, I'm very like focused on just my transformation and becoming the best version of myself possible and trying to add somebody into the mix just isn't what I'm interested in right now. So, okay. I think the move for everybody is to find someone that makes you a better person, makes you happy, and um, like makes life easier for you. Not necessarily meaning that they're doing things for you, but just kind of like a giving and go kind of kind of thing. Like you know, like a te- like a like a pa- the 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 power couple. Mm-hmm. You know, like, hey, mm-hmm. we need milk. You got milk? Cool. All right. I'm over here. I'm going to get fucking detergent. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> or or you pay the bills and I'll fucking make sure this house is spotless. Or I right? These are these are kind of trades if you will. And <laughs> and you're fucking funny and handsome and or for some guys like man just just really do a good <laughs> do a good job in the bedroom is that what yeah. you mean? <laughs> That's true as well. Some guys, yeah. Certainly. Yeah, but those usually aren't the relationships that work out. Right, because then they get old and they can't do the same moves that they used to do. Yeah. And lust. Well, Level I less, think, who was I lust. just talking to? I feel like when, you know, and I mean, it doesn't need to be this, but, you know, when you're getting too old and you can't, like, function properly, get a sex swing. And then, you know. A sex what? You don't have to worry about, swing. like, throwing out your back or your knees. Swing. Or, you know, a sex whatever. swing? Yeah. Okay. That, like, you know takes the challenge yeah but you also have to have a partner that's open-minded if they're like what a sex that's what you think we need a sex swing like whoa i was just (laughs) so how would you how would you introduce that into the bedroom you just came in one day and like look what i got on amazon (laughs) no yeah. I don't. I don't know. Either a conversation, or I would no, just I think have it, it up one day, and she'd be like, no, "What is that?" No, like, I, I think it's having ours. it up one day. <laughs> it's ours. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the move would be like, uh, "Hey, let's spice it up a little bit." If they're like, "No," they're like, "All right, okay, fine." <laughs> and they're like, "Well, what are you thinking?" And you kind of, you know. Throw some shit at the wall, see if it sticks. Ease it in there nice and slow. Hey, let's go. Hang on. Let's go to a sex shop. Let's go check that out. (laughs) Right? Hang on. Dude, this is a true story. I was dating this girl, right? We were in Pennsylvania, and we went into a sex shop, and we're checking out. The guy's like, oh, dude, you fought the other night. And I was like, um, yep. (laughs) <laughs> and dude, I was pro, but I wasn't in the UFC. It was just like a local show. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, dude, were. I saw you fight the other night. I was like, uh, what? <laughs> you sure it was me? <laughs> <laughs> I think I got like a free condom or like a cock ring or some shit. I'm sure that guy tells that story to this day. He plays poker with his buddies. Like, I sold Dennis Bermuda as a cock ring, bro. What have exactly. you done with your life? So. Jessica Penny, maybe uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see if we can get Menace out to Atlantic Dan's City for the day. definitely going to try and get you I am into not. a sex store <laughs> in Atlantic City. <laughs> They're all over the place in there, aren't they? What did you guys do for your first date? Well, this fucking idiot took me to a sex shop <laughs> thinking it was on, but I'm never calling that guy again. <laughs> uh, Jesus. All right, so Jessica, before we let you go, we got to get your side because obviously Dennis thinks he didn't almost fight oh, Travis Brown. right. So what happened that night? You guys are hanging out. Let's hear your version. Uh, we, <laughs> with Travis Brown? Yes. <laughs> um, God, where were we? We were in um, Sacramento. We were in, I thought the, we were in L.A. No, it was uh. Sacramento. It was after um, I just got out of the Ultimate Fighter, and it was, our, it was like our um, – it was a fight appearance to um, – to promote the ultimate fighter finale i believe if i remember correctly i mean it's been several years but um we were all at you know out at a you know social gathering having a couple drinks having fun and mr bermuda's tried to you know freaking fight the no! No! biggest person of the ufc <laughs> no! Oh, no, no 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 i'm just kidding i'm just kidding <laughs> Um, I don't. She's think- a lightweight, dude. She did, she had like two drinks. She's like, woo. Here's what happened. We went around. We went. Me and Travis had to walk around the club. He was like, oh shit, I'm buying shots. Buys like fucking six shots for everybody. Everybody has shots. Cheers. Drink some. Guess who's still holding their shot? Jessica Penne. He's like, hey, Jessica, you're not gonna have a shot. She's like, uh, I don't want it. He goes, okay. Takes it. He goes, you're gonna drink it, Dennis. I said. That's funny because no, I'm not. And he was like, no, you're going to drink it. And I was like, I turned to Jess. I said, Jess, I need you to take the shot because if you don't, I'm fist fighting <laughs> Travis Brown right now because I'm, I refuse to take the shot. She was like, oh, fine. And she fucking was my hero that night. <laughs> I saved your life. <laughs> well, 
I was going to punch and run. <laughs> my favorite was my favorite was after I took a picture of you and him, and then when I showed it to you, you realized like how ginormous this guy yeah, is. He was resting his you. fucking arm he on my head. He was resting his arm on your head. Yeah. And in that moment, you turned to me and said, "Thank you. You yep. saved my life." <laughs> yep. That almost went south real quick. Real, recognize, real. Well, yeah, we need to get Travis on. Yes. Jessica, you fucking at him. I'm gonna at him. We're gonna fucking get him on here. But we got gotta it. we gotta word that story properly. Enough's enough. He, Travis Brown needs to know about the fight that he didn't even know was even on the horizon. <laughs> 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 the storm that was brewing. Yeah. Little does he know. Little does he know. Little menace was little. Well, the funniest thing is when you told the story that you played it out in your head and you were like, when I hit him, he didn't go down. So it wasn't going to be good after you yeah, even hit him. Yeah, I was going to just run right through the crowd because we were like, like kind of like a VIP-ish section, right? Yeah, it was a really cool like bar lounge. Yeah, I was going to jump. I was going to step. I was going to jump on the bench and jump off the bench, crow hop, and then just run right into the crowd off that. He would have been like, did you just fall into and me? And he was going to be like, Dude, what the f- did you just fall into yeah. me? Like, did you just? Yeah. <laughs> Why did he leave? <laughs> what's wrong? what's his problem? Dennis like bumped into Does me and then took the off bathroom? running. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, full foot taller than yeah. you. He's got you by like eighty pounds. Cuts. I think he cuts two sixty five. He's a big. No, boy. he's huge. He's, he's huge. ginormous. Yeah. He's yeah, like the biggest human I've ever seen in yeah, person. Bro. Yeah, probably pretty strong too. You had a yes, chance. Yes, you are. You had a yes, chance, Menace. Are. Yeah, God, snaps, you are. Snaps a single. Jess, grab the other leg. <laughs> She's like, nah. <laughs> You're on your own, homie. Should have took the shot, bro. <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> and she didn't take it at all. <laughs> <laughs> and then after which, would have been Team Travis. Like, yeah, that's fucked up. You didn't take that shot, man. What a dick. I know. I am definitely notorious for not for not uh, taking shots. I'm just, you me know, not a shot. too. <laughs> but you look like a shot taker, you know? What? You do. You do. What's, hang on. What exactly does a shot taker look like? <laughs> to me, a shot taker looks like the fucking fat guy <laughs> with the fucking camo hat at the end of the bar. You know, you just look like a guy who likes to have a good time yeah. and doesn't really, you know, doesn't really care. Like, oh, here's a shot. Yeah, party. Oof. What do you know? That's all. That's all I'm saying. You know, you're a good time. That's I've, I've, I feel like I've. Uh, so the last few camps I was doing apple cider vinegar shots and someone told me about like, yo, blow out all of your air and then take it. And it's not that bad. And I was like, I started doing that. Then I started applying that to shots. I'm like, whoa, this works a little bit. There's something behind that. There's something blow out all of your air, take the shot and then just try and get the fucking taste out of your mouth as soon as you can. Because okay. I feel like I have like a weird, like a gag reflex when I take a shot. Like as soon as the alcohol hits the back of my throat, it's like, what? We're trying to get this out. Instantly. If I even, like, I have a, a reflex <sighs> to a shot before it even, like, touches my lips. Same. I literally just, Same. I, I'm like, oh, God, no. Same. <laughs> like as soon as, it, as soon as it, like, fucking passed, like, my fucking mouth, you know? As soon as it passed my lips, it's just like. Ah, oh, throw up. Just get it out. Ah, <laughs> oh. it's mm. the worst. Well, you almost died one day for turning one down, but we're happy that you're still here. Two days, two times. Two times, yeah. Tai Tuvasa almost beat him up one time too for turning <laughs> down a shot. That, that's a thing with like Hawaiians or Australians. Yeah, like, like take a shot. I'm like, nah, I'm good, nah. I gave you a shot. You will take it. Like, nah, I told you not to get it from me. <laughs> Well, well ne- now Menace learned. Next time he might take that shot. Well, I have my new breathing technique where I blow out all my air and I fucking swallow. Or liquid. when they all take it, just throw it over your shoulder and be like, oh, God. Yeah, but oh, if they God. saw you do that, say you, I'm might so- well, you might as well splash in their damn face. Say I'm so fucked up I missed my mouth. Oh. God, yeah, make it like you're just Yeah, fucking. Jessica bumped me. Yeah. That's what we should have been. <laughs> you had a lot of ways you could have played that other than That's I'm going to get into a fight with yeah. the biggest guy in Versus the bar. Versus like, yeah, yeah. let's fucking... Slug this one out. Are you seven foot? Nope. Good for you, because it's, it's <laughs> fucking on, bro. <laughs> All right. Well, Jessica Penny, we appreciate your time. 
And uh, hey, thanks for having me again, guys. Yeah, it's like always the best. I feel like we had a real bro zest right now. Oh, for sure. I I enjoy it thoroughly, seriously. And when you guys come to Atlantic City and visit me, we'll have a really fun session too. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get Stan's gonna buy me a room and drive me and buy me drinks and all those things. Bro, I need my money to take Jessica on a date. What do you mean? I need to spend my money wisely that weekend. I'm going third wheel. Oh, you're gonna ooh, that'd be nice. You can come and do color commentary on our date. (laughs) Wow. And Stan amazing, trying actually. to put his arm around her. She and Stan's is, going in for a kill. Oh, he's getting looks, denied. Looks like she's wrist locking him. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, Jessica, we don't want to go too creepy on you, but <laughs> maybe one day. If I can, I'm going to put that on my vision board. Go on a date with Jessica Penny. God willing. And see if that comes to fruition. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. Thanks so much again for having me. All right. You're the best. All right. Bye. Miss you. Bye. Oh shit, Lance Wade's calling right now. Patch him in. Yo, is this Lance Wade? It is. Oh shit, you on the Menace in the Man show right now? Am I? Yep. I'm just watching your Menace in the Man show. <laughs> watching you tell lies to uh, people about your hoedown, potential hoedown with Travis Brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Like, do you even go to work? Like, you quit already? <laughs> what are you talking about? I, I was done at uh, 3.30 today. You still got you on uh, shop bitch duty? I'm not shop bitch, okay? <laughs> I climbed the freaking pole today. I cut out like four times because the thing was fucking so dry and old and rotting. <laughs> oh, so you, you almost took it deep today. Nah, but I was in total control the whole time. Hmm. So he says. How are you, Lance Wade? Welcome to Menace and the Man. So we got uh, hello, hello, Stanley. Lance Wade, brother of about to be the million dollar man, Chris Wade. Yep, PFL fighter, state champion, Lance Wade. Take okay. it easy, Dennis. Take it easy. Uh, state champion, Lance Wade. What do you mean? Yeah, mm-hmm. New York State wrestling champion. So what? That was a long time ago, pal. Juco, wait, JUCO All American as well, right? Twice. Twice. Dang. Yeah, those Hang waves on. get down. I'm over here naming specs of things I've never <laughs> done or come close to, and he's like, watch it. Easy oh, does it. Boy. I'm glad you said it because I didn't want to be like, he's well, he's good. He's a, he's a state champion. <laughs> Dennis wasn't, you know. That's all right. Dennis, Dennis was. Uh, he tried you know, hard. You know, Dennis fought, you know, in the UFC for quite some time. Whatever. Very, very. Um, you want to call it decorated, Dennis? De- what decorated the... UFC career? Um, yeah, I won in various ways. Mo- yeah. u- usually decisions. <laughs> I think you. I think you earned a few chevrons in the UFC. No. Yeah, we we mixed it up for sure, man. Oh, yeah. for sure. Oh, oh, Stan, do you remember when Lance used to come in the room? At Lima. Yep. A few times. Me and Lance never got the train oh, together. Oh, he would have crushed your ass, dude. No, I remember he trained with like um. <laughs> He trained a lot with uh, Michelino and um, yeah. Black Dave. So Lance used to come into Long Island in May. We were all relatively. I was already. I was. I think I was like seven and two pro. I think did Chris have a couple of pro fights by then, Lance? He was in the uh, ring combat probably. He was in the no, ring. Com- yeah. Yeah. He was like four yeah. now in the ring combat. I I think when I came down, it was like like you had already like i think you may have already like had like two fights in the ufc right yeah you already had like a barnyard booyah with bryce at that point like when he came down it was after the extension we had the cage on the other side when lance was coming down oh right well no but the extension was after i was even uh, after the ultimate fighter yeah extension yeah i remember having like strictly wrestling sessions only in the cage with like you, yeah. Uh, I want to say like Andre Harrison. Ne- yep, Andre Harrison, Ryan Needle, Ryan Needle, and like Chris. Yeah, I remember yeah. Depot saying like, that he was like heartbroken that Lance Wade didn't stick with it because he was yeah. like that kid's fucking tough. I, Hang on, I, I, I got a job, dude. I had a, <laughs> I was in a tough spot there. Like I got a job, and I'm like, I got, yeah, I gotta take this job. Were you like, meter reading at the time? No, I, I was, dude. When I, when I was coming down there, 
I was actually a short order cook making breakfast at a restaurant at a like a breakfast place. <laughs> and I was like, all right, like, yeah, I'll get, you know, I'll give, uh, you know, I, I, I'll give scrap in a shot. And then like, literally, you know, I had a couple of irons in the fire at the time. And National Grid came calling and like, yeah, the job is yours if you want it. I was like, for meter reading. No, I started in the call center. Dude. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So I, you know, I got my brains beat, beat in by, uh, you know, people why their bill is too high or uh, you know why they owed money you know uh, yeah you don't even like talking to like people you like yeah yet alone someone complaining to you about some (laughs) obvious shit like well did you have your gas on for heat yes yeah like a lot of the times it was like yeah um Maybe you shouldn't sleep with a s- electric space heater next to your bed all night. Like, <laughs> yeah, your bill is two hundred dollars because you have you've had a space heater plugged in for a month <laughs> while you're at work. Now, yeah. how did you like? You just had to bite your tongue and not go Lance Wade on. Yeah, it. dude. Like, I couldn't. Like, I, you know, like as much as you want to tell somebody to, like, you know, like, yeah, like fuck off like how about that like i don't need to hear this shit i'm like this is my job like if i go berserk on somebody i'm gonna be in a ball game probably might might lose my job like not trying to do have that so you kind of just gotta like keep it cool Uh, and like it's crazy there dude like the supervisors like listen in on your calls like when you're talking to people to hear if you're being a dick to people yeah yeah and to like hear if you're doing a good job so how long did you do that for five months and then i got to meter reading and was there stuck there for a couple years and then i got out to a real job where i was actually making decent money that's what up so 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 what do we owe the pleasure of lance wade calling you right now just kind of wanted to check in on dennis you know i seen him i seen him uh you know having some good old family time up uh you know up in the up in the sticks and I was just wondering how work was going for him. Yeah, so are you busy in like 15 minutes, Lance? Mm, no. All right, we're going to call you back. We're just going to talk to Felicia Spencer real quick, the girl who just fought Cyborg. Yeah, do your show, boys. Enjoy. And then we do want to get back to Lance Wade, though, because we got some great stories to get in with you as well. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, there's questions coming my way? Yeah. Oh, for sure. I feel like this just turned into an interview, so. Yeah. All right, all right. All right, so we're going to talk to you Dennis, in a few. Do you, Dennis, Dennis got his wish, Stan. <laughs> What's his wish? DFW. Oh, we he got a DFW. He wants stories, so I, I, yeah. I, I guess, you know, I guess I can solo deliver a few. Bro, you well, no, you could like... call up and pr- be Ooh. Chris Wade. He could do Chris. He sounds just no, like Chris on the phone. hang on. Can't we do, like, um, like, group calls? Yep. We're going to call up him and Chris. Yo, start texting some of your homies and let's get let's get a, a few of them on. I gotta see who would be. We could definitely, I believe, do one merge, right? All right. So Dennis, out of everybody, iPhone. who would you want on? Well, the thing is, it's not who is the craziest. It was who can tell the story the best. Yeah, I mean, because uh... in my head, I'm thinking, um... fuck. Why am I drawing I a blank? Who's the little guy? Can... Who, Mignani? Mignani? I'm thinking Mignani, but I, can he deliver the story the best? Mm. <laughs> mm, probably not. Right. I mean, I, I bet. I think your best bet would probably be like, you know, m- me or Chris or like, you know, you know, my friend uh, Colombo. Yeah. He he he's a. Uh, he, he can deliver a, All right, so, a story so start about texting as them. eloquently as, as, as anyone. Yeah, so start, start texting them. See who wants to come on the Men's the Man show and, and give a couple stories. Yeah, tell them 10, 15 minutes talking about DFW, building up Chris Wade's appearance in, an, in a week or two. Uh, you want me to call Chris? I think he's teaching, but he might answer for you and be like, yeah, I'll talk about this shit. Highly doubt it. All right, so we'll, we'll text you. We'll, I'll text you in a little bit. All right. All right, peace. Later. 
Man, he sounds so much like Chris. Well, they're brothers, so that's weird. No, but usually you don't have the same voice. Me and my younger brother do. Who, you and Jay Bird? Me and Jay Bird. A little bit. A little bit. All right, let's try Felicia Spencer. Can I go get myself another drink? Yep, you can get me one too if you want. Fuck you. Hello. Hello, Felicia Spencer. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Good. Stan the Man here, Dennis the Menace Bermudez. Welcome to Menace and the Man. (laughs) Well, thanks for having me. Nice to meet you guys. Yes, big fans of Felicia Spencer. She just came on to the... (laughs) Well, you've been doing it for a minute, but you just really blew up with that cyborg fight, right? Uh, I guess you could say that. Yeah, I've definitely been training for a long time and competing, uh, or, you know, training to compete for a long time. (laughs) So... How did you get into MMA? Uh, it, was, it was kind of a gradual shift from, you know, training different martial arts, you know, growing up and, um, and as a teenager and everything. Um, when I came to the jungle in Orlando it, it is when it kind of all became mixed, you know, together. And, and that pursue, you know, competing in MMA it was 2009 uh, when I started Mixing it all up, I guess. <laughs> all right, so you 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 started in Canada. How how old were you when you moved to Florida? Uh, no, I, um, I my family actually moved from Canada, before, so I grew up in South Florida, uh, Southwest Florida. Uh, that's where I do and jujitsu and everything. And um, so yeah, it started with type and started jujitsu and then kickboxing when I was a teenager. So and it all just came from there. <laughs> oh, so you've been doing this since you were young. Yeah, I was four when I started Taekwondo, um, and I was I started Jiu-Jitsu, so definitely grew up doing it all. Oh, so you started this when you were four? Yeah, yeah, so definitely a lifetime of martial arts. I don't really remember, you know, my any, uh, there's not much life before martial arts, so uh, just. Oh, what would you say? You cut out right there. Oh, no, I was just saying. Lifetime time of martial arts and you know i don't don't have we might have so, a bad connection um, right now you keep going in and out a little bit um give me one moment can you hear me now hello hmm? felicia she fucking hates you dude <laughs> oh she doesn't yeah, she does. Felicia? She's like, total dud. I don't know why it's not picking up her phone. Felicia? Maybe hang up, call her back? We're going to call you right back because we seem to have lost you. Yeah, why the fuck's it doing that? Mm. Uh, tech guy. I'm not a tech guy either, bro. Oh, you're back. Yeah, I am back. I had to go and get myself a little... A grape, little what? Grape G Fuel. Grape G Fuel? Hello? Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I don't know what the fuck's going on I with this. Plug, look. We are plugged in. My phone charger. Hello? Yeah. What the fuck just happened? I'm wondering, is it my phone or is it her phone? I don't know. You lost her though, dude. You freaking lost her, dude. Guess we got to get Stan back on. Who? Lance Wade, you mean? Lance, yeah. Well, no, it was from once you got up. For me? Mm-hmm. Nothing's coming over here. No, once you got up, though, and, like, m- m- malarkey it, juggled it a little bit. It should be rigging, you know? Yeah. That wire doesn't even come over my way, huh? Nope. We'll get back to our one moment. 
Yeah, I don't know what the fuck happened that this thing's not coming through no more. Uh, I guess we gotta end the episode. What'd you say? I guess we gotta end the episode. No. Give me one moment and I'll figure it out. Hey guys, it's me. I'm down here. I'm trying to call your phone to see if it's ringing. Dad, did you just fart, dude? No. I'm pretty sure I heard a fart. No. Yeah, why isn't this thing? It's not even calling you? No. Interesting. So, maybe you gotta pay your bill. I've paid my bill. I mean, you have, but is it paid up? Is it paid up? Mm Mm-hmm. Because now you get... What do you mean you know how I get? Look at all the people money and shit, nigga. No. I was not doing my phone bill. Because if you owe people that take control of your phone money, you know? Dang. It's something with my plug-in cord, but we'll try her again in one moment. I'm going to reset my phone. Ugh. I want to start doing things to like a call analog. I don't even know what that is, Stan. Wait, you can set it up. On the computer, to where you're taking all the phone calls through the computer. Oh, it's uh, it's called. You don't know what the fuck it's called. Yes, I do. You little bitch. You definitely don't, bro. Oh, I definitely don't. Nope, no chance. It is called. Oh fuck, what is it? Yeah, it is not even calling you. Yeah, cause you gotta pay your bill. Stan? Whoa! Now it is. Whoa! Why well, stop ringing? Hey, Stan. Is, is this better? <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, Felicia. Something was going on with our connection here felicia <laughs> what oh, is God, up <laughs> hi no stan you know my co-host over here stan i let him have like one job and he can't handle it <laughs> well now we'll call it fresh, yeah. <laughs> fresh start felicia spencer welcome would to you Medicine believe the that <laughs> oh uh, it happens it happens <laughs> well hang on you can't just let those things slide okay <laughs> there's gotta be repercussions Stan the man here. Dennis the Menace Bermudez is the guy you hear trying to create some conflict, but that's just something he likes to do. <laughs> hey, what do you think? One leg kick? Maybe, maybe two. <laughs> two. Oh! Two? Why wow. Gonna... <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever seen Dennis fight? You just did me dirty, Felicia, because now he's going to like stick to that. He's going to be like, nope, she said I owe you two. <laughs> uh, sorry about that, Stan. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, Felicia, you're like a little bit yeah. evil. A little bit what? A little you're evil, like, he said? Yeah, I've watched you fight <laughs> multiple times. Uh, uh, well, I definitely, I guess uh, there's just a flip that gets switched once in a while. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I know the switch. It's fuck it. <laughs> just yep. full send. Because if you're like, Man, I'm thinking about throwing this elbow, but what if it falls short and she hits me back? Hey, that elbow's not landing. But if you go, what? Don't really give a fuck. Let's send it. That shit lands. <laughs> she had Cyborg looking at me like a goddamn unicorn. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was pretty fun. <laughs> so, Felicia, I'm sure you've seen that they released Cyborg. What do you think of that? Uh, you know, I can't say I'm surprised. I wasn't really sure what direction that would go, but it's just got some options. Um, part of the reason why I ended up taking the fight on, you know, pretty short turnaround was I figured this might be her last UFC fight and I wanted to have an opportunity. Um, so, you know, I kind of, I kind of knew that was a possibility coming. 
So now, uh, you know, I definitely wish, wish the best to her, though. You know, hope she has uh, some good offers coming her way. When you got into MMA, was she like the fight that you always saw? Um, you know, she was. She's definitely always been on on the horizon for me. Um, you know, I, I she, like you said when I was especially becoming a professional uh, about four or five years ago. She was, you know, just leaving Invicta at the time, so she was definitely. I've had my eyes on her for a while. Um, so, was, you know, definitely, like I said I've said it a few times, and I was honored to be able to face her. Um, things didn't turn out the way I, I planned. I didn't execute the way I should have, but I'm still really grateful I had the opportunity. To, uh, to fight a legend, so you know who else has had her his eyes on her. Who? Oh. Stan. Me. Yep. Stan. <laughs> yeah. Stan. If she was like, you want a piece of this? You wouldn't. Would I fight her or hook no. up with her? Hook up with her. Cyborg. Yeah. I don't know about that. Come on, Stan. Nah, <laughs> I, I'd be more interested in Felicia before Cyborg. Oh, yeah. Felicia. <laughs> Whoa, here we go. I mean. Yeah. I think Felicia's a little bit out of your league, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you can take that up with my fiancé, I suppose. <laughs> Ooh, who wins into a fight? Does your fiancé train? Yeah, he's a fighter, too. Mm. I'm not trying to... Explain. I got my money on your fiancé. <laughs> <laughs> Me, too. Because... <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> Stan's own one as an amateur, but claims that he thinks he's a black belt. I've been given a black oh, belt by someone. He's been given a black belt by somebody. So. Well, it's good. Congrats. <laughs> it's a big accomplishment. <laughs> I've got black belts in my closet, like fucking some Levi's, fucking Ted Baker. <laughs> well, I consider myself like an old school gym legend. But even past that, I'm not trying to fight Felicia Spencer's fiance. Once she said she has yeah. a fiance, I'm good. We'll yeah, end that he would conversation. He would your ass. <laughs> he might kick your ass, too. Ah. Yeah, he might. How big? How how big is your fiance? Uh, he fights at one seventy. Walks around, you know, a little heavier than that. Yeah, same. <laughs> Closer to two hundred. You don't fight at one seventy, so I'm putting my money on Felicia's fiance against you as well. <laughs> okay, Stan. Well, I keep her on the line. So, um, so what the fuck are you doing, dude? Where do you live? Me? Yeah. I'm I'm in Orlando. I um, that's where I stay. Um, I actually. I'm recovering from my first uh, outing to Texas State Brazil, that restaurant that I eat a lot. <laughs> so I'm like really tired because I just finished that big meal. <laughs> mm. uh, my coach took us out to, uh, you know, to kind of welcome me back to town. Um, but yeah, man, I'm just, you know, finishing. I worked all day, so now I'm just hanging out, ready to call it a night soon. <laughs> Are there alligators over yeah. yonder? Alligators, yeah. Well, you know, you don't, you don't see them walking around the streets of Orlando, but uh, there definitely are. Um, you know, there, there's a presence of gators around lakes and stuff like that. Yeah. So, do you go? You don't go swimming in the bodies of water around you, except for pools. No. No, no. You, yeah, you don't. Uh, yeah, if you go up in Florida, you know, stay out of those, stay out of those lakes and stuff. You know. Um, yeah, there's enough good, safe places to swim at, rather than risking it. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I grew up in a smaller town where there was more of a danger of seeing a gator randomly in the street. So, you know, I knew if there's a ditch with water and I'm probably not going to go near it. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, I but, definitely yeah. want to catch a, an alligator in my lifetime on your bucket list. What was that? Yeah. I want to catch an alligator. And not like on a fishing pole. I want to fucking throw a towel over his fucking face so he can't see shit and fucking. Jump on him and close his fucking jowls. Is that crazy? Uh, a little, but all power to you. <laughs> or let's say I make a noose, fucking throw that out of his mouth, fucking tighten that bitch up so he can't bite me, and then we get into a fucking wrestling match. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I take it to that. <laughs> you know? I got my money on the alligator. Stan, <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Bro, you're fucking tempting fate right there, trying to wrestle alligators. I've seen an old man do it. I think I can do it. Yeah, but he's trained. You got to learn the... No, you didn't see that meme with the old man. Flish, you've seen this meme where the old guy's like, let's get this fucking alligator out of this fucking little gully. And he throws a towel, totally misses, tries to jump on the alligator. The alligator almost bites his leg off. Have you seen this video? No. 
old. <laughs> it's pretty old. I haven't seen that video. I've seen the other videos of the alligator get, biting the guy's arm and doing the fucking tornado with him and like sending him flying, breaking his arm, <laughs> dislocating his shoulder. Is it Felicia? Uh, is the alligator uh, land near you? Gatorland, yeah, that's that's right here in Orlando. Um, it's definitely underrated. I've actually never never actually been in it, but <laughs> everyone around me that has says it's definitely one of those places you, you gotta go to if you're in Orlando. So, are you gonna go? I, am I gonna go? Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, just hear me out. Every time family ends up going, I have to work, or I just missed out on a few opportunities to go. Hear me um, out. But every you know, they always say it was a great time. So. I, some, <laughs> I think after you and your fiance get married, you guys go on a honeymoon to Gatorland. Ooh. <laughs> honeymoon to Gatorland. Yeah, right. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be funny, though. <laughs> so when's the wedding for you and your fiance? Uh, we're not exactly sure. Uh, we're kind of fixing up a house that we bought, and then once that's done, we'll kind of plan plan the rest. So it's not really something we're stressing or, you know, we're happy the way things are. And whenever it happens, it'll be, you know, a small thing and nothing crazy. So just whenever, whenever we're ready to move into the house and stuff. So it's like a really, 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 really strong promise ring. A strong what? Chemistry, you said? Promise ring. Like, there's no date. It's just a promise ring at this point. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, well, we've been engaged for well, two no. years. We've been together for five. So, uh, right. you know, we we bought a house together. We we're we're in it. You know, we're in it for the long haul. Just, All right. Uh, so how we do don't you... want to stress about you know we don't want to spend money on a wedding. Yeah. Do that me whole thing. You know, we have our priorities yeah, straight so... for what's important. And you know, whenever uh, our my big thing was we bought our house. We got to move into it first, and then we're gonna have the party in the backyard so we got to be actually moved into it for planet so I like it. <laughs> we're close we're close I like it. so how'd <laughs> you guys close. meet at the gym of course um uh, yeah he came into the gym uh five years ago and um uh, pretty much inseparable ever since so nice romantic who story. picked up who <laughs> um well it's kind of funny i guess he tells the story great but Get him. Is he home? Um, he's he's been playing video games or something in the other room. <laughs> what games he playing? Uh, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't play play much, but once in a while he'll jump on there. Um, but yeah, I play. I was in a fight camp, and uh, so I wasn't really so quick on anything but training at the time when he came to the gym. And then I guess he tried to talk to me, but I kept ignoring him. And then after my fight, I started to respond so it was uh lucky that he was you know uh, a little more persistent because i was i was a little preoccupied with the fight camp at the time that he came to the gym so um so yeah where was your guys first date uh jason's deli for lunch <laughs> i think um yeah we just had a sandwich or something um you're simple right you're out. a simple girl you don't need I mean, you know, I enjoy the simple things for sure. You know, I def- we definitely, uh, you know, enjoy doing adventures and different things like that. But I'm, I feel like I'm pretty grounded, you know. Like, I like spending quality time with people. And certain things I know aren't aren't uh, important, even when they come, you know, money and all that stuff. We were both pretty broke when we met. So, <laughs> you know, at the time, that was an outing for us, for sure. Yeah. So what do you see as your next step in your fight career now that the cyborg fight's done and she's now out of the UFC? What's next for you? You know, there's I know there's signing other featherweights. I saw there's a couple other ones coming up, and you know, honestly, I I don't really know what they have in mind. I haven't really had a chance to talk with anyone from the UFC, but you know, I know Amanda wants to defend her title. I know that for sure. Um, I don't know who they have in mind or what you know what the next steps are going to be, but um, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to talking with them. You know, I, I am looking forward to taking a little bit a short time off, you know, of uh, being in fight camp for the, you know, two in a row. But I'm definitely motivated, you know. This, um, the last time I lost, I think I, I 
posted about it. The first fight I ever had as an amateur, I lost, and then I went and won, you know, 12 in a row. So I feel like that same kind of motivation is kind of stirring inside me. Like, you know, I didn't execute the way I should have, and it, it definitely is driving me to, to want to go back in the gym, you know, right away and start start training again. So, so, how'd you, uh, so you'll definitely see more of me. <laughs> how'd you come out of that fight? Clean? No injuries? Yeah, I, was I had a couple black eyes. I mean, you know, there's some shortness and stuff, but no injuries. Um, I'm I'm doing good. You know, I'm, I'm, there's barely any black eyes left, <laughs> so just a little a little tiny bruise left under my uh, my eye, and you know, I'm sure um, it'll be all gone pretty soon. And um, you know, you know, enjoy a couple a little bit of time off. I think it's important sometimes to give your body a break, especially I know it's you know a tough fight and everything, so take advantage of that and then just use that motivation when I start training again. Girl, you just need like a six pack of Coronas and a spa day. <laughs> <laughs> spa day. Uh, I've definitely enjoyed, uh, you know, the week after the fight, I spent some time, you know, traveling in Canada a little bit in the Rockies. So I definitely had some, some good mountain air and, uh, you know, it's nice to be back home. <laughs> but, Do you drink beer? Uh, I drink beer, yeah. I like, What's your go-to I, I like beer? sour beer. Ooh, that's uh, delicious. I'm not, I'm not big on regular beer. I do like sour beer. They're um, so good. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's pretty much. I, I usually don't don't won't drink anything else anymore. Um, now that's my go-to, or you, or also just drink a cocktail of some kind, you know. Um, <laughs> but uh, would you get? Yeah, I've definitely been enjoying that. <laughs> I feel like you can't get drunk on sour beer, though. Uh, there's definitely, you know, some of them, some of them I've seen even like six or seven percent. So there's what? some no, out there. That are no, a yes. More rare. Uh, but most of them are lower percentage. No. I don't mind, you know, I, I enjoy myself and it tastes good. So I hate drinking something that doesn't taste good. You know, it kind of just For sure. Good. Well, no, some <laughs> of them do have higher alcohol uh, percentages. However, they're very like sweet and light, right? Like. How many lemonades could you drink until you're like, well, I'm, I, I'm going to throw up, you know? Uh, yeah, well, they, they, they're unique, that's for sure. Yeah, I feel, um, like, I, feel like you don't, I feel like you probably don't drink as much as I do. Yeah. <laughs> or am I mistaken? Or am I mistaken? Uh, no, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a heavy drinker by any means. But, yeah, me uh, either. <laughs> you know, I go through phases. I think everyone kind of maybe goes through phases or, or not. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I'm in fight camp a lot, too, so when I'm in camp, there's none none of that. So, especially being uh, basically, like, the last four months of sobriety, you know, right, no drinking. Right. I'm definitely more of a lightweight right now than, I'm, than, uh, than I have been in the past. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know now, how it goes. did you know your chin was that good going into the cyborg fight, or did you find out in the cyborg fight that you could take a punch like that? Um, I was pretty confident, you know, I've... I know, uh, you know I've been hit before. You know I've trained for a long time. You know even eight, eight, ten years ago, training with UFC fighters and professional men. You know hitting me. Uh, so I've always known I, you know, could take a punch pretty well. I would think. Um, you know, and Cyborg hasn't really knocked anyone out cold so much. She has just kind of overwhelmed them. So I was right. expecting to get hit, and then if I start to you know, cover or just react in a bad way, then she'll take advantage of that with overwhelming, but not so much like she, I, don't, I can't think of any that she's really knocked out cold, you know, so it's not even her thing. So Me either. I wasn't, wasn't expecting that. I was just thinking, well, if I get hit, I need to move, be conscious and, and, you know, circle and get out, you know, so that was, I was happy with how I reacted most of the time. I, uh, <laughs> not so happy that I got hit so much, but you know, it's live and learn, live and learn. Um, enough about Cyborg, because no one cares. Um, <laughs> well, I was talking about her fighting. It was, it was just happened to be that she fought Cyborg. Stan, listen, you can't ask a fighter like, oh, like, did you know you could take a hit like that? Like, have maybe? you ever been punched that hard in a fight? Me? Yeah, that's a good yes, question. I have. I wasn't asking you. I, I know that, but shit. one of the worst things people come and be like, oh my god, it's not like. Dude, your takedowns are good, or like you're a good strike. It's like, dude, you could take a fucking hit. Like, oh, sick. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks. Sorry. Th thanks, bro. <laughs> Anyways. Um, 
there was probably one, one, one or two that were probably the hardest I've taken in a fight, but you know, definitely, I've I've fought some pretty strong, powerful people before who aren't, you know, who don't have names in the sport so much. Um, but yeah, there was probably one or two that were harder than I've ever probably have, been hit before. Have you ever fought um, your fiance? Yeah. However, we we don't fight. We train. You know, we have fun training. <laughs> um, you know, now, fine. You know, is we'll, it full we'll bore on your end and the little what what what's what's the percentages when you guys move around? Um, well, he's a pretty much a lifetime wrestler, and that's his strong point. So he's, you know, he'll he'll um, he'll pretty much have his way on the ground or you know wrestling. And he's so much bigger, you know. It's normal to for him to win that kind of exchange. I mean, I've I've gotten him pretty close a few times, and um, but striking, you know, he's kind of unorthodox. I guess I am too. We're both a little bit, a little bit uh, odd strikers, <laughs> a little bit unusual. Now, um, but when you move with him, you're not, definitely trying to knock really, him out, right? No, you know, we at our gym, what? we have fun. We train smart. We're not trying to we're not trying to hurt each other. If you get knocked out, you're not fighting for you know the next month you know it's we're, we're our gym is definitely moving to smart training you know um we're not we're not ever trying to actually hurt each other and knock each other out that's just not you know we're we want each other to have a long career and what gym are you at again knocked out in training jungle what was MMA. That? jungle mma yes yeah <laughs> you know if you want to have a long career you can't be getting knocked out in the gym every week that's just that's just counterproductive. Well, I mean, any girl I spar with, I want her to try and knock me the fuck out because good luck. <laughs> and then... Uh, well, until, until you start getting knocked out and then it's counterproductive to your career, you know? For sure. And then... <laughs> it's, it's um, a button that, you know, anyone can hit it, so... Yeah, um, but hang on. You don't, have, you don't have people that you train with that you kind of think are disposable? Um... No, I, I get what you mean. Like, if, if I can't do certain things to certain people, then you know they, they're like the practice dummies. Is kind of where you're getting at. Kind, in a way, kind yeah, of. Like there, not, there are people that I'm like, this guy will never even become a professional fighter. Let me work my fucking hardest shit right here. Uh, well, I get what you mean, but I, I never. We're not ever trying to knock each other out by any means. You know, if I can light them up. And tap, you know, in uh, growing up doing martial arts that are all about self control. You know, I can throw a kick full speed and stop it a centimeter from your head, and you get the idea that I could have just kicked right, that off. Right, know? no, I and do. And that's when people give you the real respect in the gym that you know you can go hard and not hurt each other. I've only and knocked out that. one person, it was on accident. <laughs> Anytime I've actually tried um, to knock them out, I never knocked them out. <laughs> exactly. I know why you think I'm like this bully. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I get what you mean. I get what you mean. No. But yeah, I know. We all, everyone's the gym is, it's like a family there, you know? So yeah. there's not anyone there that's um, not on the same side and we're all trying to help each other get better. So pretty much everyone in, you know, in the pro training uh, sessions are, are trying to become amateur or professional fighters to some degree. And, you know, we're all just helping each other get better. So Michelle. definitely. You know, we have a we hold each other with a lot of respect. Everybody at the gym. So, so now is your Wikipedia accurate? Because I'm reading that it says you're a high school math teacher. Is this true? Um, I'm a I'm an algebra teacher. It's a virtual school, so I don't go to a physical high school. But I, uh, yeah, it's a it's a high school class, and I'm still actively teaching. Very much a full time job. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna hit you with some shit real quick. Square root eighty one. <laughs> What was that? Square root of 81. Oh, that's, that's not even algebra. It's fine. That's just arithmetic. Uh, oh, I was just checking. Uh, but yeah, don't quiz me on basic math. I don't, uh, you know, don't put me on the spot. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's, a, it's a great, you know, it's a great opportunity for me to, uh, you know, to connect with people. I, I talk to a lot of students. You know, I, I didn't become a math teacher because I'm obsessed with math. I, got, I became a teacher because I love teaching. And math... I figured always I'll, I'll always have a job. You know, I'm good at it. There's always going to be a market for a math teacher. So it was a logical choice there. Um, you know, I like to help people that have a hard time with, with things, and a lot of students have a hard time with math, and that's really why I picked 
that path, you know, with teaching because I just like to help people figure shit out, you know. <laughs> That's what's up. So, uh, you know, the light bulb going off is a good feeling for anybody. So. So that's your day job. You're a math teacher by day, UFC fighter by night. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you could say that. It's, it's pretty flexible. I train during the day. I teach at night. It's, it's, you know, all day for both of them, really. <laughs> Will you have to be, is there a number of money you'll receive per fight where you're like, you know what, this whole, like, uh, teaching thing, I'm, I'm going to push it aside for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you know, there. I can't say that there's like a specific number. It's definitely something I've been thinking about for a long time. Um, honestly, in the past, I was like, man, if I get if I get there, I'm I'm done. You know, if I get to the UFC, I mean, I'm I'll be done for a while. But for me, it's also the division I'm in. I feel a little. I mean, I'm pretty comfortable with with where it's going. But until I'm 100 percent confident that I'm going to be consistently fighting, right. you know, uh, two or three times a year. I don't care what I'm getting paid for one fight. If it's not going right. to be consistent, then I'm not going to just give up on, on my future. You know, it's, it's not, uh, I, I've been able to manage it, you know, balancing everything. It's busy, but I'd much rather be busy and, and handle it. You know, I'm, I can step up to the challenge rather than possibly set myself up for being stressed out about money later on down the road. You know, so I'd rather just, wait until I know I'll be consistent or, or if I make, I mean, if I bank something huge, then yeah, maybe, but, <laughs> uh, but right now that's kind of where I'm thinking right now. Just once it, once it gets consistent, then I'll be comfortable there. Yeah. Just being smart. I mean, the UFC yeah. brought 125 into the UFC for a couple of years and they're like, yeah, I think we want to get rid of it. It's like, what? There are people yeah, that, yeah. you know, you're feeding Especially on with, that. You know, a man is the champ and a cyborg just left. So, I know they're building it, but once yeah. I'm comfortable, that I'll be able to be consistent, like you said. Well, I tell you what, from the outside looking in, and I've only known you for two fights now, you've definitely made a lot of noise, and you're very vocal, and you say what you want, and that's not everybody can do that. Well, thanks. You know, and it, no, that's it's. it's, it's a lot of people can be badass, but to be badass and, and fucking be vocal is another thing. And be vocal and be, like, relevant and, and like, make sense. Some people are like, ah, yeah, press the milk. You're like, what the fuck did he just say? He's an, he's an idiot. Well, thanks. You know? Well, thanks. We definitely appreciate that. Um, hopefully it's a sign of good things to come, for sure. Oh, definitely. You're in a spot right now with the 145 division being the way it is. You're one fight away, if not next in line for Amanda Nunes, I would say. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm I'm definitely excited to talk with the UFC about what's next. And you know what? If it makes sense, it makes dollars. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah, good way to put it. Yeah, that money fight's on the horizon, Felicia, so... We want to thank you for joining us here at Menace and the Man. Yeah. When you book your next fight, we'd love you to come back on. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, I want to hear street fights you've been in. No. All right. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you. Thank you both so much for having me. It was nice to nice to meet you. Hopefully next time Stan will have his uh, his act together though, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I tell that I tell that to him before uh, every episode. <laughs> like Stan, today you're gonna fuck up. He's like, Yeah, Dennis, I got it. And then he fucks up. No. That was no, like some, no, something was no, going on there. I no, wasn't fucking no. up. She, she wants two leg kicks, dude. You're getting two leg kicks. <laughs> You're getting zero leg kicks, Felicia. He's not kicking me. This guy kicks hard. Have you ever, oh have, have you ever seen Dennis fight? Gosh. Yeah, I have. I have. Stan. <laughs> I would need to be drunk to take one of those leg kicks. Okay. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Felicia, uh -huh. how many drinks should we give him? <laughs> Say again. How many, drinks, how many drinks do you think we should give him before... Oh, how many drinks? Yeah, he says uh, he, he says he needs to be drunk before. <laughs> um, well, definitely something strong, whatever it is. Okay, what? What? What's, all right, Stan, fill her in. What, what's your go-to? What's my go-to? I don't yeah, know. I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to it tonight. You ain't kicking me. Or okay. you can. Okay. You know what? <laughs> the weekend. In, in the honor, weekend. In honor is of approaching. In honor friend. of the in, former Invicta featherweight champion, she's probably going to be the future UFC featherweight champion. I'll let you like kick me once. <laughs> Not today, though. And just because she oh, said it, just because she threw it out there. Gosh, she said two. 
And you're getting one, <laughs> man. All right. Take the plea agreement and deal with it. That's what we're going with. One. Felicia, do you accept, Felicia? Are you gonna take it down That's to one? Fine. <laughs> All right, fine. She'll it's take fine one. On She'll take one. Well, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna at you. We're gonna send it to you as well. We'll do a little <laughs> All right, intro. Good. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you All for right, joining well, us, Felicia. Again, we guys. appreciate your time. I can't wait. Of course. Have a great rest of your night. All right, you too. Thanks. Bye. Bye. My name's Dennis. I'm going to kick my co-host because I'm a dick. She's the one that said it, not me. No, you're the one who said it. No. You are the one who said it. No, she said two. No. You're the one who threw it out there. Well. Like, you know what? I'm going to kick him for you. And then she, she was like, you on. know what? That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. I, I didn't think she was going to say yes. But then you found out that Felicia Spencer has a dark side. Well, I actually opened up with that. Like, you are evil. So do we want to see if Lance Wade got anything for us? Yeah, pick up my phone. You pick up your phone. I can't reach it. I can't reach it. All right. Well, I'll, I'll hit him with your send off. Well, see you later. We're not going to call Lance Wade. You're going to go to sleep. <laughs> pick up my phone. Pick it up, man. You, I can't pick it up. You got it all the way down there on the floor. Oh, you're still going with this sleeping thing? Oh, this kid's crazy. (laughs) (laughs) The fuck away from me. Pick up the damn phone. Bro, go back to where you were sleeping. And do it with your eyes open. Look how great both of those camera angles were. (laughs) All right, nobody wants to watch you sleep, though. Or maybe they do. Maybe we got some creepers in the chat. My God, the fuck? Man, that's really how you play it? You just pretend you're sleeping until... Well, you're getting text messages from some chick, so you can look at those. No, I'm not. Oh, I am. Probably the person who owns that fucking dog you stole. Yeah, right. So I'll leave this up to you if you want to go Lance Wade, one of your fellow linemen, and get a couple DFW stories. Fine. Calling now. Throwback Thursday when I was sleeping. <laughs> Throwback Thursday to when you were sleeping? Yeah, Tuesday. Toss back Tuesday. Fuck you, fucking Friday. <laughs> <laughs> if he hasn't answered, I'll freaking drop that motherfucker. Yo, get your boy on the line. Fix that. How do I do that? You. Huh? You have, an iPhone. You have a freaking iPhone, dude? I do. Oh, yeah, please, so. Please I think you just call him. So go to contacts. If you text. Yeah, add, add call. I do add call, right? Yes. Yeah. We'll wait. Don't worry, I'm Lance. Going, dude. We'll okay. wait. So how's your uh, episode going this week, Dennis? I don't know. This is my second one of the week. No bigs. We're not doing one Thursday because motherfuckers be out. You were like, I'm going to turn Felicia Spencer against them. And she fucking came on my team, dude. Yeah, that was Team Menace versus Team Stan. And I lost. Yeah. I lost that one. That was funny. She's like, I have a fiance. <laughs> <laughs> you can fight my fiance. Right, now, now you're in, John. Yo, John. Stan you, Stan, you there, buddy? I'm here, John. <laughs> wow. Ah, uh, yikes. All right, man. You're on Menace Yo, and the Man. Wait, let me, Dennis, can, right. before you get started, can I ask Stan a question? Of course. 
I can't wait. Stan, how did tri- how did Triton fights go recently? Um, I don't know. I wasn't there, but like, Lima went five and zero. Oh. That's that's not your that's not your thing. I thought that was your uh, thing. No, NYFE. I, I used to fuck around with the NYFE. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I screwed you. Sorry, Stan. Thanks for shouting out the competitor, but I'm done with NYFE. We're gonna start our own thing one day soon. It's gonna we're gonna call it Menace Fighting Championships. Uh huh. Mm. Hopefully you can like, you know, maybe get like some Lent. like bar stool bar stool esque like slobber knockers. With we're, guys that don't really know what they're doing, but just have blood feuds with each other. We want to get some DFW guys on the car. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Lance Wade's gonna headline. Yeah, I don't know about that. Any, dude. Anything goes. Is it no rules? No rules. I don't know. You guys have like Which sneakers is, on and like boxing gloves. Rules. Sneakers, boxing gloves, and mouthpieces, and then like anything it's goes. Just, like I said. It's just NFL Blitz rules. Blitz 2000. Get nasty. Yeah. <laughs> wait, you, you don't, wait, you don't think you can get, like, no hold barred, no boxing gloves sanctioned on Long Island? No. Uh, definitely. Underground. Yeah, we, <laughs> we'd have to do that. We, we could definitely yeah. do that underground. Lance, no, Lance, has a ba- Lance bought a house. He's got a basement. We could just fucking get nasty. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Whatever happens, happens. As Mike Tyson said, fuck it, it's a fight. Whatever happens, happens. That's right. <laughs> All right, so that's you what know? we're going to do. We're going to organize some half-sanctioned, we'll call them, fights in okay. Lance Wade's basement. Okay. I like that. All right, so. So now what's going on here? Gonna, this is the thing. Are we gonna, if we're going to lay down some stories for posterity here, we got to have some ground rules here because there's some people like, my, I myself am a, am, am currently, I have nothing going for me. I'm fucking, I have no one to worry about. All right. I'm a fucking. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. Every, bad. every story you guys say, you can lie to us if you want. Yeah. They're all hypothetical. Oh, no, 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 once I get it, there's no lying, but I'm just saying like. Hang that, on. These, like, all yeah. these stories can be hypotheticals as well. No one's saying these are real oh. things. Okay. Right. You see, you see what I'm saying? Like, hey, you see what I'm saying? Legally, allegedly, yes, I right. understand. Allegedly, so, these yeah. things may or may not happen. So tell us some hypothetical right. or alleged times that maybe Alle- some DFW guys might have gotten into a skirmish or two. Right. Allegedly, someone may have done coke out of a stripper's butthole or something. Something like that. Allegedly, though. Allegedly. Nothing, allegedly. You know, allegedly. I understand. All right, so let me let me throw out a story that I've heard. I don't know if uh, I, I Lance. I think I think you got, I don't know. Chris said he actually almost died on this night, where he got drug away from the crowd and like beat up really bad and almost like left for dead by a dumpster. He snuck yeah. away because his shirt broke yeah. and like then he drove yeah. back yeah. with yeah. your father with a baseball bat. Yeah, so... <laughs> were both you guys there for that night? No, 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 no. I'm pretty sure we were playing Super Nintendo, actually, and we got a phone call that was pretty pretty harrowing. Chris Chris was in bad shape. All right, so hang on. We'll, we'll attack that story with, when we have Chris on the line, then. I want, a, I want a story where you two were in it for sure. Okay. Why did it happen? Yeah. Where were you? How old were you? How much time you got, fella? Enough time for a good one. Uh, oh, oh man, let's think. Let's go down. Let's see. All right. Well, you know what? I think I think we may have dabbled into this story on uh, Fourth of July. Um, if it, it, so, what are we now, Lance? 30 so this is probably going back high school about this is about 13 or 14 years ago allegedly <laughs> all right let's just start this out allegedly yeah. some people there may have been some drugs involved like psychedelic <laughs> drugs so all right we you know we like to get after it Bottom line is, it, it may it's involved myself, Lance, Chris, uh, and and our friend Tom and Yanni. 
Okay. Thomas. We'll stick to first names. We'll stick to first names. Because some people have criminal... Some people might have... <laughs> literally a standing criminal record. So... We, we may have taken a, large, a, a lot of mushrooms. Or I may have. So, again, things got a little hairy. Um, Lance... Lance... Uh, I can't go with Lance. Lance, uh, Lance is a, has a very... We all have imaginations, but when Lance gets into an outdoor situation, Lance can very quickly revert to a very competitive, like, wearing, like... Like, when we were kids, me and him used to, like, go in the woods and, like, make weapons and, like, right. make booby traps and, like, try to, like, make things, like, hurt people. Like, literally... Like, hurt people bad, or like, animals? No, both. Like, okay. both. We did bad things. Whatever got closest like, no, to you. Would, we would set up we would set up traps that when I look back I'm like if someone walked into this like they'd be fucked up. <laughs> they would fucking get like a sharpened stick would like fucking like get, give it to them. Okay. So, but long story short, we were may have been tripping on mushrooms and we thought we were in Vietnam. <laughs> All right. I think I heard the story. Continue. Yeah. So we thought we were in Vietnam. Bottom line, um, it wasn't exactly America versus Vietnam. I'm pretty sure it was. Um, Pretty sure it was the Japs versus the Russians we were playing. <laughs> playing, I know the Japs is not a very, is a ter but it was Japanese versus Russian. Okay. And um, but bottom line is, uh, I got, I myself got speared in the face with a, <laughs> with a, uh, a piece of bamboo. It ended up being <laughs> a sharpened piece of bamboo. It was like a one in a thousand shot. I don't know if it could be made a again. Spear. It was a spear. A bamboo spear. spear. It was like it was like you guys know like Zulu warriors like the, in Africa yep. like they fought the British. Yep. Yeah. It was like a Zulu warrior fucking threw this thing, dude. Like ah! fucking, he fucking hit, he hit me in the face. It fucking ended me. <laughs> I, and uh, who who is he? <laughs> Thomas. Tom. Thomas. Tom like threw said, a spear. It hit, Thomas, he he was aiming for your face, your head. It hits you in the face, goes through your cheek. The, the chances are he was aiming for me because he actually, at that point in time, he was shot. He had like a blood vendetta on me. He, he like, <laughs> I think we told you that he tried to like, he would try to like run me over and shit. He would like steal his parents' car and, and then like be like, "Damn, like I did. missed him. I missed him." <laughs> so, yeah. so and he. he he sent the spear through your cheek. Right. Not, so I, not, 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 not quite, Dennis. It wasn't yeah. through his cheek. It just, I mean, talking from somebody's perspective who was also <laughs> may or may not have been on a heavy dose of psychedelics, uh, I think exploded on his face. Like, Where did forehead, it make contact? On the forehead. Forehead, face, straight the chin. face. Forehead to chin. It was just, like, it was cheek, off. Mouth, lips. It just exploded, really, on his face. Yeah. Yeah, like. How far away was a spear thrown from? I mean, I got, I got. 20 say, yards? I want to, yeah. It was like an exquisite javelin throw with precision <laughs> that just. Because, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, you were. You were actually on Tom's team. It was Chris and me versus you and Tom. Oh yeah. So you were oh, yeah. in the general vicinity of where it was thrown. So you so you had the bird's eye view of what yeah. actually of what actually went down. I was I you was know, I was in awe of the fact. I was that fucking I was in fucking La La Land. All one second, and the next second I was in the fucking dirt. You know, yeah. like I didn't know what the fuck happened. <laughs> Did you snap out think... of what was going on? Lance was fucking. He, I mean, I was fucked up. We didn't know it was fucking pitch black. He was yelling at me to stop bleeding on him. He's like, stop <laughs> bleeding on me. But like, I was fucked up, dude. We were fucking losing it, and like, you gotta, you know, this was. Um, we weren't like, you know, big time, you know, pot smokers or like, you know, this is the first time we ever did mushrooms. This wasn't first like, time. You know, uh, yeah, no, this wasn't like we were like, you know, the. We were like the hippie crew in high school that like just happened to wrestle. Like, no, we we didn't really do anything except drink. 
you know? So that was like kind of, this was like a, a, a new type of feeling. Like I never experienced this. <laughs> <It was> fucking, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know if you guys ever have indulged, but a lot, you know, from what I've been told, you know, you, you like, you know, you look in like the mirror, you start fucking like your face is melting. Yeah, but hang on, I've, I've heard these things, but like, I feel like you have to take a lot for that to happen. Yeah, but when you're, it's the first time you're doing it. I mean, no, I mean, oh, listen, I don't know. But all I know is it fucking happened. What, what happened? So my, <laughs> my face has melted. <laughs> <laughs> Literally and figuratively. Like, did you take an eighth? What? Like, did you take an eighth? Was there acid on it? Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure we all took an eighth. Each. Well, like, we went, we went hard, like, our first time. That's insane. Like, yeah. like we brought it, we, we turned up, like, the first, you know, the first time we, we brought it right to... Like, so-and-so right does this level. mount, and look at them. We're fucking tougher than them. Yeah, well, basically, how again, you know, sometimes sometimes you're the hammer, sometimes you're the nail. Unfortunately, <laughs> you know, right? So, so this turns into. It, I honestly don't really remember what happened the rest of the night because now again, you got to like this point. Like I used to, like me personally, I used to get, I used to get fucked up all the time. Not only I'm like I was always getting hurt. You know, and like I would sleep at the Wade's house. The, uh, they're, you know, Chris and Lance's parents are very, very patient people. You know, they were kind of the, they were kind of like the, uh, they were like the house of, you know, bring them back. And the downstairs was the dojo of the boys. It was like really? a no man's land. I feel you know, like Tom would be like, you motherfucker. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, he, he can be, but, like, they knew, like, they still, like, you would come down there and it would just be, like, 12 guys just, like, sleeping everywhere, you know. Wow. So I made the decision, like, we were, we happened to be around the block from their parents' house where our friend lived. So I, I, I was like, I'm not going home like this. Like, I'm not doing this. This was... This was actually, which is another, just my person. So this is not too long after I had, Lance, you know this one. I had, well, the Iceland Beach, I had gotten, dr I may have gotten drunk and, <laughs> and, and, and jumped into, um, jumped into the marshes and, and jumped into the thorn bushes and I got poison ivy all over my whole body. Yeah. Um, when I was like 14 or so. And, um, I woke up. In, a, in my bed, in my pen. I mean, I was covered in poison ivy. I had cuts and bruises. Shit was broken. Fucking shit. And like that. So this was not too far. So bottom line, I didn't go home. Dennis. Forward. Dennis, back to your point. You know, you, you said Tom Wade wouldn't go for that. Right. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. There, there was plenty of times where... I was abruptly woken up in the middle of the night by my father, or <laughs> not even in the middle of the night. Like abruptly this. woken up at like 7.30 in the morning on like a Sunday, <laughs> like a heavy bender, like we're all ossified, drunk, and my dad would be like, like hey, go downstairs and get your buddy up, he's sleeping, and his cock is out. <laughs> <laughs> get him up and get him out of my house now before I do. So don't, 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 don't let it fool you. Don't let it go oh, no. like sneaking in and late his night. His cock is out. His <laughs> cock was literally out. As, as he told, his, Tom has told Tom Wade has told me many times. His, he, he likes to tell me that I live my life in the penalty box. <laughs> you know? Oh. No, Lance is right. Lance knows better than me. But yes, it, 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 don't get it twisted. It, there were there was many times where Lance Lance may or may not have engaged in 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 fisticuffs with the old man. You know, there was some. You know, he, he, sometimes we really sometimes we push the limit. Let's put it that way. Yeah. You know. Well, this, you know, besides the besides the you know psychedelic bamboo face spearing you know incidents there was hey, hey, hey. whoa 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 that story's not done 
No, it's was, not. Hang no, on, no. hang on. What? Do, all right. So you're bleeding. You have splinters, bamboo splinters everywhere. What was the? You guys are on. You know, you're 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 not home. What's the move? Well, that's what I said. I don't really. I'm not fully sure what happened the rest the rest of that night. We were losing it. I mean, I was in a point where basically you gotta like we were ruthless to each other at this point. Like, did, we're like, did you go to the hospital? Ever? No, no. Ever? That's what I'm saying we were at this point. We were ruthless to like. So, like, we had no conception of, like, what the right thing to do was, like, if something bad happened. Like, so, we were more concerned with, like, getting in trouble. So, like, someone could be, like, really hurt, and we were just like, no, nah, you got it. Like, no, nah, you're throw good. Some salt on, throw some salt on it. Like, John, you're good. Like, they're t- like, you know, and again, usually I got hurt a lot. I was the one being told, like, you're good. <laughs> like, you know, like, there was a, yeah, so, bottom line is we end up, I sleep at Lance's, I said, my father, my, I get picked up the next morning to go and um i tell my dad that i fell off a skateboard which was completely 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 believable he's like do you have a a splinter in your head son and he had no he did not believe it at all but you know again last like is a guy like he he just had no like he didn't like he had no nothing to say well he didn't he didn't need to take you to the hospital so it's like all right fine I'll take, no, 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 no. I'll, I'll take dad, the skateboard. Not, again, my dad's not a hospital type of guy. My right. dad once told my dad once told Tom Wade actually, I, I split my elbow open and I needed stitches, and my dad and the way the Lance's family was actually at a barbecue, and my dad told them that he would put the stitches in himself. I we weren't going to the hospital. Yeah, we're, we're not doing it. Yeah, I've got my my old man used to do the old butterfly yeah. band aid. Yeah, exactly. Like Pinch that's what it, it is. Butterfly it three, four times, you're good to go. Let it, let it, don't take that butterfly off until it heals. <laughs> well, so what, to, to conclude this story, really what, what the, the, the kicker was, again, like, these guys, you know, were busting my, ch- you know, it was a funny story, and then, like, we got, like, a week, and my tongue was swollen like a fucking, you know, uh, you know, like I was in a, going into, like, shock. Like, I was having an allergic reaction. My tongue is all fucking swollen. I'm miserable. I can't eat. I can't do anything. The funny part is starting to wear off because I'm in fucking pain all the time. So <laughs> we, so I go to the ENT. I go to doctors. And so you finally, how, how much longer after the spear hit in your face to actually go to the doctors had passed? I went to an two ENT weeks? probably like a week. I go two weeks later, like a week and a half, two weeks later. I go to the ENT. Finally, my, my mother is like, like, I'm like a kid. I'm 15, 16 years old. Fucking, like, I'm losing it. excruciating it. pain. Excruciating. Like, so you'll see. So, bottom line is, we end up, uh, the guy tells me it's fucking scar tissue. He went out and had, a, you know, this fucking ENT was that, you know, he went out and had a fucking cigarette break and fucking came back and said, yeah, you're good, <laughs> buddy. You know, a little fucking scar tissue. So, you know, I guess. They said, you know, basically like another week goes that, by. Another week goes by, and I, I get out of the shower and I pull a fucking, I pull a, and I, I think I got a scab on my tongue, which is fucking retarded because it's your fucking tongue. You don't have scabs on your tongue, right? And uh, and I pull out, it's a fucking wood chip. I mean, this guy. I mean, literally, I brought in a fucking plastic bag to school. It was a fucking <laughs> long ass wood chip. That was Dude, it was legit. Tongue. It was legit, like. uh Probably like a one inch wide, like what? Two inch. No, dude, this thing was big. Bamboo, this thing was dude. big, big, yeah. big. Like yeah. how? How? Like, how? Yo, scar tissue. You're good. Get out of here, kiddo. Like my tongue was immobile, dude. Like when I tell you, that's when I when you think about. Yeah, it, my because you was was, you essentially had a bending. goddamn splint in your tongue. Yo, yes. yo, yes. John, John, was this was was that after you lost your front teeth? In the no. unfortunate boating accident, or before? No, that was before I lost my family. Uh, okay. Uh, we're accident. gonna need that, guys. We got stories, bro. We got yes. fucking stories. Yes. Uh, this is, and this is that's not a DFW story. That's more like a... Dennis, Dennis. This you and Stan. This isn't. This isn't even like. We like haven't even scratched the earth. No, really hang on. We this, this is, might this be a weekly ultimate, installment ultimate where we story. have you guys come on and just give us one story. 
Yeah, absolutely. We don't want. And we can piece them all together over time and fucking make a goddamn DFW fucking the DFW chronicles. Yeah, yeah. the teeth the teeth shattering isn't really necessarily. I mean, it was just it was me and Lance with a couple non DFWers. But bottom line is, non I may have DFWers. I may have. We were going across the bay on a boat, and I may have fallen onto my my the the. The, the bench may have connected with my face. I may have fallen and shattered my two front teeth. Wow. Right. So it was pretty That was pretty a, bad. Listen, pretty that, bad. Was a, that was a, that was a, yeah, that was a, a moment where John picked his head up and looked at me and just a couple words, how bad is it? And I repeated back to him, how bad is it? Question mark. Your teeth are all over your face. <laughs> so basically, he ground his two front teeth into these tiny little pieces. Literally, his front teeth were gone, ground into nothing, because he just took a chunk out of the fiberglass of the deck of the boat with his teeth. Oh. And Johnny's got two fake teeth in the front now. Well, the, well, he probably, the oral he surgeon, better now. Now I'm 30. Now the oral surgeon said to me, "We're gonna put in, we're gonna put in implants when you get old, a little older, and you know you, you you grow up, and you're not you know getting into into shit anymore and getting into trouble." So fast forward to about 12, 13 years later, and I still have those same caps <laughs> that he put on. <laughs> I hope we have not made the decision for implants yet. I, <laughs> he doesn't know if you're done with your shenanigans. Apparently, I'm not mature enough yet. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to continue this next week, maybe the week after, the week after. We're going to get Chris Wade on soon. We want to make the DFW yeah. Chronicles. We've got to get the good stories, though. Like, me and Dennis both already heard this one when we were at your guys' beach house that one weekend. We want the good shit. Now, how, well, let me ask you this, Dan. No. How many how many microphones you got in that studio? We now? have enough. We have enough. We gotta come in and get off the phone. Yep. We gotta come in with some fucking and, and, and fucking really. Yep. Well, well, let me let me follow it up by how much how long are you guys on for? However long we gotta go to get some good stories, an hour, two oh, hours, boy. three yeah, hours. That. But it's also not that even enough time. Yeah, it's if not we, even it, enough time. If we get a group of people too, we also gotta like make sure everyone doesn't talk over each other. But we're down to fucking bro out with the DFW crew. We gotta do it when Chris can do it so he doesn't have like a fight, which is actually now ish. Yeah, but we want Chris there. Chris is well, part of it. He's like he's the, had plenty of opportunities. Yeah, you gotta respect the fight coming up eh. excuse though. But No, we yeah. definitely need Chris needs Chris is a good, you know, Chris is Chris is in the Chris has a good memory of things that occurred though. Like, well, like, cause there's a lot of stories, man. That there's a lot of different. Pe- I mean, we got to put it all together. That's why I want all of you guys, so you guys can finish each other's sentences. Yeah, you know, shit gets a little. Remember, oh man, I'm just thinking don't even get into it. it. Yeah, let's not save it. Bad, <laughs> so. Fucking, Let's come up with some stories for next week. Yeah, and jot them sp- down. Okay, next let's, week. Let's get, let's, get off, let's get off their airwaves, John. Save All right, story. boys. Well, next week Save we're going right, to we're gonna start the DFW Chronicles. So we appreciate you guys for joining us. We, again, won't use last names. Thank you, Lance. Thank you, John. Yep. Um, yeah. Even though you right. used my last name about <laughs> uh, 45 My last name's... My last name's Columbo. It's fine. My last <laughs> name—I don't mind. I'm worried about other people. Like I said, I, I got nothing to—I got nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, hey, you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, I lost—I lost—I lost self-respect and shame a long time ago, boys. Ooh, I like that. I like that. All right, gents. Yeah. We'll catch All you next week. Boys. All right, Stan, Dennis. All right, thank you for joining okay. us, fellas. All right, love you. Thanks for having John yeah, on, guys. <laughs> All right, bye. Thank John. you for having me, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> Made my night. <laughs> Catch you guys. Boom. All right. That's it. All right. Uh, Menace and the Man, episode 42. Well, see you later. <laughs>